What the fuck is up, roomies? You already know who it is. It's your boy the other day, and we are back with another segment of Neighbors. And on my right-hand side, I got Calico the Hitman. You already good, know, what's good, what's future good. multi-platinum producer, repping Uptown. You already know. Introduce show, show. yourself, man. Calico the Hitman from and Uptown, me. Washington Heights. Shout out to my boy, Nelly Nell. You already know what it is. And I didn't introduce our very, very esteemed guest in the back. Of course, we got Nelly Nose. On the one and two today. Fresh, free, <laughs> clean. <laughs> He's taking over for Manny Hit Him With It. And of course, we got to shout out the whole fucking In The House team, Manny Hit Him With It and Johnny Baboon. And our newest addition, Mike Trout. You already know, guys. Y'all ain't here today, so fuck y'all niggas. Shout I love y'all. Purism. Get the Purism hats right there. It's Mussolini's brand, Crisis. Shout out to Jam Law, Knife Wonder. Y'all know what it is. And we're going to have the link for that. Down in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, man. so what's up, guys? What's going on, Nels? What's going chilling, on, man? Cal? Chilling, man. Chilling, man. Um, Calico, the hit man in the building, man. Um, a very prolific um, hip hop producer. You know, what I'm saying um, some of y'all might know who he is. Some of that, some of y'all might not. He's a very low key, low profile guy. Um, so, um, very you know, incognito. Yeah, very, you know very, very incognito and low profile. Yeah. That's Re- recently, we did a project together called La Purina. So, La Purina. Y'all better go check that out. You La feel cocaína. me? You know what I'm y'all saying? better go check that out. Shout out to the Menace. Shout out to Sturdy, Sturdy Flirt. That's my guy. I don't know what his new rapper name is. He also live it. You feel me? La Formula X and OG. OG Formula X. Can- uh, I don't know how to say his name. Bro. OG Kanka. OG Kanka. Yep, yep. Yeah, um, I had trouble. I had trouble looking. I was like, what, yeah. is, like, what is his name? Like, Yo, bro. What's listen. up with that name? Shout but- out to Ivy Productions for filming the video. Shout out to the other day for editing the video. I got you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. I do it all, guys. I thought y'all knew. But fucking, we'll have the link to the La Purina down in the description as well, guys. Yes, sir. So make sure you go check that out. Make sure go make make that shit go viral. You feel me? It's that uptown music. That y'all should be supporting. Yo, real quick, um, Calico, um, I know that you're mainly hip hop, obviously, mm-hmm. rap. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel making that transition to doing a Latin trap um, beat and do, being part of that, like introducing yourself? Well, was to Latin that trap? like I, I would say like um, I was like you know what? Let me start doing these trap Latin trap joints. You know what I'm saying? Cause like I like it. You know I like the 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 hip hop. Spanish genre, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like those type of rappers right now, they blowing up, they shining. And I was like, you know, let, like let me just start to get get some bags off of this stuff right here because you never know what, what might happen here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we okay, we got the underground hip hop here, we got the mainstream hip hop here. Now you got the Latin trap right here, and it just blew up. It's blowing up. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like like just be, you, you had those Latin rappers doing. Boom bap. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they were doing boom bap. But, but then some of them blew up and some of them didn't. Yeah. But then now when this, you got this Latin trap genre going, it's just blowing up. Everything is, is just taking off. But that goes, It took years just to do that. But that goes back to what we were saying earlier. Yeah. Like, Uptown has a blockage of talent. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying that we lack talent. I'm saying that we're in abundance of talent that's unshown mm-hmm. that's unshown and unshined. Do you feel me? Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of rawness in uptown that people need to tap into. And I'm not just saying I'm not just saying that for like the roomies. I'm not just saying that for all the YouTube and out there. I'm yeah. just saying that in general. It's like, bro, like it's about time that you feel me that Latinos move into the circle as well. That we also have our voice. You feel me? Because it's not like and this is what I'll say, you know, to anybody. Black and Latinos are like this. You feel me? Like you have that, a black man. community, you're gonna have a Latino community yeah. right mm-hmm. next to it, we were, and that's how it always we is. We're part of the hip hop movement. Yeah, exactly. Matter we're right fact, next door to the Bronx, right there, yeah. bro. This is uptown. Yeah. Matter of fact, how y'all feel about people saying that Latinos didn't have a hand in hip hop? Now that's crazy. That's that's, that's crazy. bullshit. Because even Buster Rhymes, KRS One, like you know, like they guys who've been around a long time in hip hop. Mm-hmm. Um, they've come out publicly and said it themselves that, like, yo, don't forget, like, hip hop started off with graffiti and breakdancing. Mm-hmm. And we knew, you know, the, the freestyle era, the house era. Yeah. Puerto Ricans, particularly, and Dominicans that were here, um, New York born and raised, right? Um, had a hand in um, the dancing portion of hip hop. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, hip hop is a, is a makeup of, of DJing 
um, you know, um, spit, uh, rapping, graffiti, um, graffiti, graffiti, and DJing, and breakdancing, and break dancing, dancing, all that break, stuff, and yeah. b-boying, basically, all, all like the four elements, bro. Four elements. And yeah. then to say that Latins didn't have a uh, history in hip hop. That's that BS right there. What about the Mexicans over there in, in Los Angeles? Yeah. They got that they got those rappers there. Yeah. And so, they that, so, so that's that bullshit right there. Yeah. Black started it, cool. A Jamaican over there from the Bronx, cool Herc, started yeah. hip hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the projects. Yeah. But then Puerto Ricans got involved also. And then Dominicans got involved also. But that's the thing about it. Like, I think right now in 2022, right? We have to point out what we can't say that hip hop is a is a one one colored exactly. music genre. You feel me? Like that's at a point now that hip hop is the prevalent genre of music around the world. You feel mm-hmm. me? It's to the point that you know you have hip hop artists of all languages, not just English. You feel yeah. me? Because yo, the Nigerian drill scene. I, like I was look telling you earlier, yo, Nigerian. I love drill. Look what the you said Nigeri- Nigerian. The Nigerian drill scene sounds. Fire and the French, yo, look, fire, look bro, yeah. fire. The French huh? and the British are killing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Half of the shit and the it French all started, be and it all started where in the X. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. it all started in the and, X. Cedric, Cedric. And yeah. you feel me? And like people have to. And this is what I don't understand. It's like people want change, want progress, want evolution, mm-hmm. but yet they don't want to let go of previous notions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like. How we're gonna ever get anywhere if we don't let go? How we're gonna get anywhere if we don't change? Like I'm not saying forget the past, cause you have to learn the past in order not to repeat it. Yes. But what I'm saying is like, yo, we're at a point now that we should be evolving. That there shouldn't be racism or sexism or yeah. of any sort of fucking ism yeah. in hip hop yeah. or in any music genre right now. But, you feel me? Because no. of the fact that music right now and the way the world's connected now, yeah. you feel me? It, music is not one genre. Like, I've said this many times on the podcast, and the roomies know this. Yo, the Japanese salsa band. Oh, yeah. Come on. You have a Japanese salsa band that sings in Spanish, and they go around the world touring. And I heard about Japanese salsa and jazz in the... In, in like in the 80s and the 90s around there. Yeah, yeah. so been it's like... for a long time. Uh, been so, for way long So time. it's like, bro, like, I understand where people say, Music yo... Music is international, bro. Yeah, but that's the thing about it. I understand where people come from, oh, they, they don't want people appropriating culture. Yeah. They don't want people to steal the culture. They don't want the yeah. essence of it to be taken mm-hmm. away. But it's like, how are you going to say that there were pe- other people of other cultures are taking the essence away mm-hmm. when the evolution of that genre of music is beyond... Yes. Now, it's yes. universal. It's not just, oh, you hear that in the streets of New York or L.A. You hear that everywhere. Global, you hear man. that shit. You, you'll, global, hear, you'll hear trap music coming out the yep. farms, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You feel me? Like country music, those country artists are really rappers that sing over guitar. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. yo, dumb, dumb white boys have they be bars. They be they, bars, they, baby. You got, you got and, hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. Hick- Hop is 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 just that country that, that that country shit. I mean, Little Nas country X, hip-hop. right? That's what Little Nas X. He was a country. Yeah, singer. yeah. You got all hip-hop. that. So yeah. all that stuff to say like Latins weren't involved. Because That's that bullshit. You know what it no, is? Yeah, it is. Talking about I'm the not country going for that country music, right? Country music has a similar background to hip hop in the sense that our country music, if you really listen to it, there's two. You know, they have the 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 storytelling. Yeah. Whether it's either about love, happiness, mm-hmm. or some drunk hillbillies in a bar, but they yeah. talk. They they they, they spit. yeah. They, but they be spitting, bro. They always have a story. And hip hop, um, the original answer of hip hop is storytelling. Yeah, telling yeah, yeah. you um, advices, it, telling you not to do this. Not yeah, to but do that. remember, yeah. it was it was during um the late '90s and early 2000s where hip hop cha- um started to stray away from storytelling. Yeah. And started just talking about uh, commercial, about commercial and being flashy and doing. Well, you know why? Because it was becoming mainstream. Yeah, the con- the conglomerates of of the music game understood like um because let's be real, rock and roll. Yeah. Um, you have to have more skills, mm-hmm. right? You have to know how to play the instrument exactly. or whatever the fuck it is. You have guitar. to actually learn how to yeah, sing. And sing. Yeah, yeah. And whole you know, bunch of stuff there. But the thing is that the message. That hip hop was given out was so influential, and it was so much stronger. Yeah, and then the conglomerates were like, you know what? Um, this these messages are so um, influential, especially to the younger younger generation. Like, because hip hop started off as you know giving uh, advice, 
oh, you know, yeah. watch it when you walk down the street. Somebody can turn the corner and you might get hit. Some shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So they understand how influential it was. You know what? If this music is so influential and and it, it's getting people like to rise up, yeah. there's money in this shit. Let's take advantage. Um, they spitting too much knowledge, so let's dumb it down. Let's invest money in it and make it more commercial, more urban. Exactly. Because but let's you be also real, have to remember that their urban culture is more influential than anything. Anyway, because yeah, because yeah. we set one, we set the trends. Yeah. We set what fashion is. Yeah. We set what's going to be on the media. Yeah. We set everything. Urban pe- the urban community sets what's going to happen across the earth. Yeah. You feel me? And it starts off, and you know. Right now, I won't say really New York because New York is in a very weird place. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, it we're is not. Mecca, that is the mecca of, of. If it's the mecca, music. Of, but New York is the mecca of the world, bro. Yeah, New York is the capital of the world. Yeah. You feel me? But, you know, other countries store their gold here. People, you know, fucking oligarchs and fucking Chinese billionaires and all these other motherfuckers want to buy yeah. fucking apartments down I mean, on Fifth when Avenue. Speak about the American dream. You feel? Um, it's New York because New York was a hub for immigrants, but and it still is. It it's still is, bro. Like, come on. When Our we city living though, bro. Yeah. Our oh, city yeah. living, but I love it though. But yeah. think about it like this though. <laughs> I love it. The New York mentality is crazy because of the fact that yeah, this city, no lie, no bullshit, especially now that in the t- this time that we're living in, mm-hmm. this city will suck your soul straight out yeah, of you. It, would, it right. will send you into a depression. It will fuck yeah. with you. Mm-hmm. But if you rise above all of that mm-hmm. and you get the fuck out of New York. Yo, you're an you unstoppable. You're an unstoppable force yeah, in bro. any well, aspect, bro. Because of the fact that the, if you want to do something, you know there's about fifteen thousand other people that want that exact same position or that millions, you're in. Millions, yeah. millions, millions, millions of people. Millions of people. Yeah. That's what they say. If you make, if 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 you can make it in New York, you can make, make it, it anywhere. Yeah. Because if That's you right. rise above the adversity and the competition mm-hmm. and all the uh, negativity, and um, people live literally on top of each other in New York. Yeah. Like, we're like what nine million um, what? in New York City alone. I don't know. Who. And everybody from yeah. around the world and wants that, to come here. Yeah. yeah. Like, my, my thing. My thing is like we get okay. treated differently around yeah. the world. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't like Americans, but if you say you're from New York, they treat you everybody different, bro. Everybody wants to be bro. around. Everybody everybody wants to be my around thing is like this. Like, like, okay, New York is cool. It's definitely cool, but sometimes get out of get out of that zone. Yeah. Go somewhere else you've never been to. You gotta refresh yourself. You gotta refresh your mind. Right. Just Go somewhere else. You gotta go to Atlanta. Go to Atlanta. I've been to Atlanta. Everybody in the they, love they, they'll, everywhere. They'll, they'll say you from you from New York. Oh shit. Okay, he's cool. He's cool. Yeah. It's different out there. Yeah. Man, sure I go to does. North Carolina. It's different. People treat me different. Like, but then but, I I go like I'm not used to this. Like people treating me kind and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, because you're from here. Yeah. yeah. But that's the thing about it. It's like people that are from New York need to leave New York. Yeah. People that aren't from here need to come. But think here. about it. Most artists that blow up, like they usually blow up outside of outside like, of New York, and then come back. Right? Yeah, but the thing about it, because like we such tough critics, like you know what I'm saying. Bro, we're so exactly. tough we spoke about it. Not only that, too. No, it's hard yo, to be a prophet in your own land. Not only that, but you also have to remember, yo, the density, the population density in this city is insane. Yeah. So it's not like you it's not some. like that you're not talented and you don't have it to make it. Is that you have to go to a, le- a less Dense population in order to shine. Exactly. Because right. it's like, yo, there's too much static. Imagine here. this: New York State, half of the population of New York State lives in New York City. Half. I believe it. And that's only what we know on paper. Imagine the mm-hmm. illegals that are here too, bro. So I'll tell you an example like this: like we was we were doing the tour this year, right? We went to SOBs right here, right yeah. downtown, right? Okay, cool. Nobody knew who I was over there on that side at SOBs, but Ninth Wonder and and Crisis they playing my beats on stage, so I had to re- I had to introduce myself. Yo, I did that beat on when the show finished. Yeah. Everybody said, Yo, what's up, Ninth Wonder? All that hit. I went up to Ninth Wonder, took a picture with him. I was like, Yo, Ninth Wonder, thank you for playing my music tonight. You played all money. He was like, Where you did that shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Then I told Crisis, Yo, I did all money. Great, cool, right? After that New York, um, that's where the tour started yeah. right there. We go to Colorado. Now I'm cool with my man O Finesse. Shout out to the whole news and entertainment, A and E. Those are my guys over there from Colorado. And you be chilling with Griselda too, right? So, well, with trust. With trust. With trust. So he, but some of pe- some of the people from Griselda know him. 
Butcher knows him. Yeah. You know, some, some people like 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 El Camino, they know him. Like yeah. those people. I'm I'm not gonna say like that like Conway knows him. I'm not gonna say that Conway knows him or um West Side Gun know him. But, yo, he's, yo, been a, but he's been around. Boop, 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 boop. Yo, son, West Side Gun, yo, that nigga's nice, but I hate his voice. <laughs> I'm being <laughs> honest, bro. Like, yo, his voice <laughs> fucking nah, tweaks yeah. a nerve in my ear. That I, actually, fucking... I actually like his voice, but he, yo, he, bro. he's a genius, bro. Yo, not, I'm not saying, genius, bro. no, I'm not saying that he's that not nigga, nice. That, I'm not saying any this, of that. This nigga, this, this, this nigga, um, West, Side, West Side Gun is that dude, bro. No, he is. I'm not I'm not saying nothing bad about the dude. I'm just saying his voice, though. Yeah. Wait, and then on top of that, it's like, it's not even his actual voice. It's just his rapping voice. Yeah, and, and, and we chilled with, with some of them, with Benny, with, with Camino. Yeah. We chilled with, even with, with the affiliates with like Flea Lord and G4 Jag. And we chilled with 38 Special. Yeah. And we chilled with my nigga Planet Asia. That's my nigga right there, bro. Like from, from, Trust, from yeah. Trust Gang and shit. Planet Asia, that's my nigga right there. We have vibes. You know, he's, he, he's like a big bro to us and shit. And he's been in the game for like mad years. Ever since, it was his, since I was in high school and shit. I would hear this, these different mixtapes and shit and go crazy with these ruckus, yeah. like, like ruckus record shit, and I just hear Planet Asia, Dilated Peoples, all this shit going on. I'm like, nigga, this thing is fucking nice, me. Yo, Calico, talking about that, uh, um, I know you've been on tour with Mussolini. Mm-hmm. You, you've done basically most of his music, you do it. Yeah. Um, um, how was that experience, that experience for you, touring, um, experiencing the stage scene? And seeing like um, how production works, like you know what I mean. Like that was a, a surreal experience for you. Yeah, I imagine. it was different because how going, was that? Like going on tour, I see like different acts. Yeah. And then like I'm on backstage, I'm getting these free. Like I go in, I don't I don't pay for the the event. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My crew don't even pay for event. Yeah. They pay they 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 pay for us to go inside there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I like seeing that backstage and then. My name getting mentioned. Yo, yeah. that's Calico the Hit Man. Yo, th- yeah. the love is there. Yeah. And it's building up. And I'm like, shit, I've been working my ass off for 25 years. Yeah. Just working, 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 working. Since 1998, yeah. I would say that shit. Yeah. Like, when it f- went from a hobby, because I still live in that crib. With, you know what I'm saying? I still live in that crib. But going from, like... A gateway computer. Remember gateway yeah, back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take it from there. From wow, high school. that's crazy. That's old from school. Gateway, My man, that's... From a, from a gateway computer going from there. Yeah, the cow box, baby. Yeah. The cow box, bro. The cow box. The logo had like a cow print, right? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Had the cow print, bro. for that shit. So I'm going from, from gateway, from that shit right there, to like different computers and more different. To like get to the 2000s and start getting the Mac Mini. Yeah. So I start doing that. Productions on there. Forget my beats that were whacked over there. I'm in the present time right now. Yeah. This shit's popping up. This is getting way better. I keep going, keep going. After work, sometimes I don't even want to do it, but yeah. I keep doing. I you keep have going. to. Keep you going. got to. I don't even want to do it. Sometimes I don't. Like, yo, I don't want to like doing it. Yo, bro, bro, all that shit. That's yo, your bro. passion. You gotta keep going. You want to know that's something? Your passion crazy? was turned into a career. Yeah, exactly. Not only yeah. that. Um, and then you know, recently since you've been working mm-hmm. with so many artists and you got to experience the behind the scenes and production, all that. Uh huh. Um, you know, like you're on the path to what great producers yeah, are yeah, about yeah. because you know, let's keep it real. When you're a producer, uh, they you know this as well because you're also a producer um the artist gets all the shine mm-hmm. you know what i mean well, all the shine but people like you know the public doesn't understand that there's more to it there's a but, guy who does a beat there's a guy that mixes the song yeah, and masters but that, it but that's and the thing about I mean? it so, now exactly. like a lot of people like just piggybacking off for what you're mm-hmm. saying a lot of people now especially with modern music and yet again this is why i love drill music yeah. A lot of drill artists aren't noticing that their producers are actually getting more shine than they are yeah, because all the because be. all those artists are looking for the same producers and it's a small yeah. circle of producers that's getting all that yeah. money, bro. They have that sound. Yeah, because they have that doo 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 sound. Yeah, you yeah, feel yeah. me? And this is what I'm trying to say is like right now is the golden it's it's a peak time for producers to come out and show their work because yeah. now there's an abundance of artists in multiple genres because yeah. you have because this is the only time in hip hop where you have you on the radio you can hear a boom bap, a trap, and then a drill. Yeah, and then exactly. hear and then hear an R and B. Yeah. So it's not like 
just trap is prevalent. Yeah. Not just boom bap is prevalent. Not just drill. Yeah. Not just sad boy music. You feel me? All of that's together. So whatever lane that producer's in, they can make it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah, right. And depending on their environment, yeah. will depend depending on their environment and their own drive to get to that point will determine on how far they really go. Yeah. You yeah. feel yeah. me? Exactly. And shout yeah. out shout out to like the big producers that Started exposing themselves. Timberland, DJ Khaled, mm-hmm. Pharrell. You know, these are uh, producers that were in, in the video. That's why when we did La Purina song, I was yeah. like, yo, Calico, you got to come on the video. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. you know, um, we could put you in the credits on YouTube and all the platforms. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on the video because at the end of the day, like, people still want to know the people face that, behind yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah. whether, whether you're a discreet person or not, whether you you know you like to be behind the scenes, if you're um, trying to be in the um, in the upper echelon of the music genre of that you represent, Sometimes you have to expose yourself. Exactly. You have yeah, yeah. to show yourself. Yeah, it's an it's yeah. it's how it's how you fucking. There's some people that like to like you know just to make like like my man like, like Fredo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fredo makes a lot of beats and all that stuff, yeah. and he's an engineer. He's a great DJ. Yeah. But he don't like coming outside. He's like yo. Yeah. You know, like I said before, he he said it as a joke, but it's reality. He's like, no, nobody wants to see an old white man yeah. be on a video yeah. and shit like and that. He's a legend. And he's a legend. But in still, the heights. But in still, heights. but still, bro. Like, shout this out is, to Fredo one eight by the way. Yo, yeah, shout out to Fredo. Fredo. Yo, but this is the difference, bro. And this is like, even from where we started from, Generator Music Group. I've always said I always wanted to be in the light. Yeah. I always wanted to be in the spotlight because of the fact that I want to shine, bro. Yeah. And it's like. This is what I tell producers. This is what I tell DJs, bro. Like, if you're a DJ, start producing. And if you're a producer, start DJing. Yeah. You feel me? Like, if artists don't want to pick up your beats, you could find samples. Yeah. You could find whatever the fuck you need to make your shit pop. Yeah. And this is what it is now. It's like, we're at a pres- we're at a point now in music where you don't need a whole studio. Yeah. You don't need fucking yeah. a thousand and two people. Yeah. You could do that shit by your damn self. Yeah. And it's all about the drive that the person has. Absolutely. And you feel me? Calico and Mussolini are great examples of that. You feel me? 25 years. As made- a matter of fact, you, you know Mussolini and stuff. You went to school with him, right? No, I didn't. I went to school with his little brother. Oh, his little brother. Okay. But I met Mussolini back in 05, yeah, yeah, 06 yeah. when he lived on... Um, you know, up in semen and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? And like I was t- like I was saying earlier, like I seen him when he was basic. I seen him when he was Mussolini. Mm-hmm. He transitioned you feel me? Lot, bro. He's and a lot, very, very big difference. And I like I earlier in the episode, you'll see me, I commend him greatly. Like, yo, bro, mm-hmm. like this man who's dropped like fifteen to twenty albums. But like like for instance like that, like for instance, like you know, like that's a perfect example. Like um uh like Mussolini, shout out to Mussolini, he used to be basic uh the general, right? Mm-hmm. What well, the thing right, is like right. He never gave up. Yeah, he no. never, and he you know, to quit. tell you the truth, his style was different. Like a lot of niggas weren't feeling his style at the yeah, beginning. People, yeah, people uh, weren't. Yeah, yeah. Back but you know then, what? Yeah, he back transitioned. Then, he grew up from that. He was getting a lot of hate, and, a lot of shit going and look, on. Nobody was feeling his, him. I used to see yeah. the, the the comments on Wall Star. Like, yo, listen, this is whack. This is bro. Shit, but that's the thing about and it. Even, <laughs> and, and, and even come for me, like, like I was like, yo, he could do a lot better if he yeah. would have changed this, whatever. And he did. But, it goes back to four or five years. It goes back to four years ago. Yeah. I'm gonna see, let me see. When he made that switch. Five years. One, yeah, five years. Four years. Seven, seven, 2017. Then 18. When we started going to the pop up shops to go see Benny the Butcher. Yeah, when we did the video, uh, Benny the Butcher, yeah, the 175th yeah. Amsterdam. That's, that's what, that, that's what we, we, he, we went to his. Um, Fam, right? Was it called the, the, the Fame? The, the store? Fame, Fame NYC. My man Ike. Yeah. Owned, Ike yeah. My, my, my man Ike ran, ran that store. You know what I'm saying? It's still like, there, right? Nah, it's some other store now, right. bro. But not. It's like it's like I think it's like a weed store or something. I think it's something oh, like that. Nice. It's but nah, you know what? Uptown needs more more stores like that that are like musical no, they, that are like musical, not musical venues, but like you see how like an LES you got those record shops that are people that are yeah. known for like music, like yeah. music artists go there do like little performances yeah. and shit. Uh-huh. We need shit like that up here, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. hey, you feel me? You know what? You want me to gonna talk after this to start setting some shit up? We're yeah. gonna, we're like gonna have, do that, yeah. We have to have a home where mm-hmm. um, we could do events. And I yeah. definitely want to bring. You know what I'm saying? Uptown. Yeah, and, right. and, I, and, I told, and I've said this a lot, y'all. I wanna bring house up here, bro. I yeah. really wanna. I want the house culture up mm-hmm. here hard, that's, bro. That's. Well, just to keep it 
in the interview. We might do a festival very soon, EDM Hip Hop, the other day showcasing uh, DJ Tiny Tim. We're gonna try to get Mussolini in there, a couple of cats, you know, old school hip hop before the summer ends. But yeah, that's what we gotta do. We gotta set up a foundation where um, we give the opportunity like, to guys like Charlie Cruz and, and, and um, ARP Music. These are guys like, that are, are known to be um, uh, uh, lyrical assassins in music, but yeah. unfortunately, they don't that's get culture. And we got to give, we got, we gotta give my, dude Spade, uh, uh, my dude Spade, my, my dude Spade a yeah. shout out too. He, um, I don't know if you know Spade, he's from the Heights. Yeah. Um, Spade, what block is he from? He's from the 180s. 180s, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Spade HTS. He got Flashy Stunner, too. Another yeah, guy, too. You me? But you got, a, you, got a, you got artists all over the place, though. Yeah. But the only thing is that, like... It's the consistency. Okay, okay. It's the consistency. Some people you either make it or break it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, you got to keep going. Us, me, Moose, Pharaoh, Pharaoh Music Group, we just a collective... Um, you got MCs and producers in there. We just never gave up, kid. We never, never gave up, kid. We had to we had to leave, like, okay. Moose got that recognition. You gotta leave your comfort zone, bro. Yeah, we went to yeah. North Carolina. We went to Colorado. They went to the Viper Room. They sold in out Los the Angeles, Viper Room, bro. Bro. That still went, exists. Yeah, the Viper, the Viper, Viper Room. room. They, they went to the yo. Don't, you know the Viper I, Room was I, the I, number I, one like club for artists coming yeah, up back in Johnny the day. Johnny Depp bought that he shit. Sold, he used to own it. He sold, he sold it. Yeah. He sold it. Yeah, Johnny yeah. Depp owned that. After Rich, I, gotta, I, I gotta watch the documentary about after, that. After no after uh, after River Phoenix died. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, he yeah. died on the strip. Yeah, but yo, like, his leg, like, like I missed that show, and I regret it because you know what it was like. Um, I had to get more money for it. Yeah. But I got so much love in Colorado that that day I was like, when they called me on stage, Knife One to say, yo, come up stage. Crisis said, yo, come up stage. Yo, this is kind of cool to him, man. He made all money. And I got that got, got, got that little um, 15 minutes of fame and shit. And it, and it, and it felt good. Of course, because you know? it's like, bro, but that, I was actually going to ask you that. How you feel after like so long of like, I don't want to quote it like this of being a bedroom yeah, producer. Yeah, 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 Cause uh, I I'm right there with oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? And this is something that you know I'm hopefully soon I'll be experiencing myself. Mm -hmm. You feel me? How does it feel knowing that you went on stage, knowing that people were fucking vibing to the shit that you made, bro? Yeah, like yeah, I, like like it, a lot of people that day. Cause I, I like I said, Colorado that day was like it's like, and mind you, I. Hopped off the plane that same night the event was. Yeah. Oh my and god. I and I was mad tired and everything. Jet lag and all still, that. But I still came out and said, "Yo, fuck it. I'm riding with Moose. I'm riding with Fuego. And I'm riding with Izzy. And I mean, Rewind wasn't there, but I'm right. We we came off. I came off that plane. They came off from Utah. Yeah. Touring, touring Utah, cause like they 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 had an event that night. Then they had to go to Colorado the same day. Yeah. Said, right about after the man Nah, it be like that, bro. It be yeah, like yeah. that. And I, they, like, like this touring, this, this touring experience, I love it. But that night came in, it felt good, bro. It felt like, like if um if Jay Z were to call Kanye up on, uh, you see yeah. how Jay Z and Kanye they're on stage, and then Jay Z said, "Yo, here goes your rock chain. You part of the you part of the club." That's how it felt like when I was in Colorado when Knife One said, "Yo, yo, if it wasn't for me." This tour will not be going on. I believe that. I believe that because a lot of what a lot of people don't understand is that the music you vibe to, 60%, and I will say 60% of that job, of that song, goes on to the producer. Yeah. Because if that beat ain't fire, that beat don't hit right, that beat yeah. don't move to your soul, bro, Shout out. It ain't, that song is not going to move no matter how fire the bar is. Shout out are. to Knife Wonder's one, daughter. All right, shout out. That's why, that's why I'll be saying her, that. The, the, Knife yeah. Warner's daughter was the one that caught the ear for that track. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, that's what's up, bro. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to you. Yeah, so that's a, that's the whole thing that I was saying that, you know what I mean? Like, um, now that you experienced that, you know how um, commercially now, or just like industry-wise, right, mm -hmm. that um, you exposing yourself, going on tour with the artists and, you know, meeting, you know, upper echelons of the game, whatever, or guys who've been there for a long time, like Knife Wonder, right, whatever. You ain't met Young Guru, right? No, I wish I'd. Oh, bro, okay. he, was, Guru. he heard your shit. He, he heard your shit. Remember you he, told he heard, him? He heard old, because if they heard old money, yeah. Knife Wonder's daughter, Crisis, they didn't yeah. know who I was until I went to SOB's that night. Okay. 
me, Fredo, yeah. the whole clique, Rewind, Izzy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm gonna say my uh, funk. Yeah. Even though you know what I'm saying, but whatever. We we, we were all there yeah. backstage. You got Static Selector in there. Yeah. Inside with us. That's crazy. Chilling. You got you got P inside with us. Yeah. Chilling. You got Chilling. um Planet Asia inside with us. That's Chilling. what I'm saying. Like, like you're nigga, there, so that shit right th- and UEP the yeah. fucking artist the the the, the man the, the yeah. dude that does Mussolini's covers right now. Yeah. All of them niggas there. But what I'm saying but, is go, like going forward, like you experiencing that, right? Yeah. And knowing how it is now. And um that's how like you know producers blow up in the game mm-hmm. because they're there. They there at the venue the event and then it's like, okay, people might hear a song that you did with an artist and the artist, you know, he might blow up that song. Mm-hmm. But if you know, you as a producer, if you want more work, um, you have to be there with you the list. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely. Be the I'm gonna be it's, this and third. Yo, you it's have to show yourself, also, bro. Yeah. It's ninety five percent business. I mean, ninety percent business, ten percent um work. Yeah, but that business always speaks out, and it speaks out in higher volumes. You gotta, you gotta be there. That's why yeah. I was I, yeah. like, I regret that as a young guy, like this, this bro, the, I, as a young guy back then, and like, like, like in my early twenties. Yeah. Me and my niggas should have been networking out. Bro, I'll yeah. tell you that. Instead, of, instead that, of recording every day, hitting that red button yeah. every day. Because everybody's recording. That was my whole point. That Everybody's recording. Not, That's my whole point. You could put all the work in you want behind the screen. And not, and behind everybody's the computer. recording. And you've told but me that plenty of times. There, yeah, if you're not out there exposing yourself... Okay, like producers and engineers, mm-hmm. right? They're, Bro, like I said, they don't get the recognition that they should have. Exactly. Because but no, that's exactly. But well, this is the whole point because they're not out there. But but this is what I'm trying yeah. to get. To. I'm trying yeah. to finish your point right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But that's the same thing that you told me. Yeah, yeah. You've told me this shit plenty of times, bro. You're doing it now. You got I'm podcast, doing it now, but think, about, radio. but think about it like this. If I didn't have the podcast, I didn't have Faded. Remember, two years ago before the pandemic, I had none of this. Yeah. I had none of this shit, bro. And you were telling me, you mad people were telling me, yo, hey, you're already there. You need to start putting your shit out yeah. there. You feel me? And this is where I'm trying to like piggyback to mm-hmm. where you at. Like me versus you is like, yo, bro, like right now I'm, you know, today's like, yo, roomies, we just met, like face to face, we just met. So it's like, you feel me? I'm telling, I'm giving this man his props because of the fact that you feel me? He's already at a part of his career where he's done made the transition from wanting it to be a dream and being a goal to being there and actually working it. Yeah. Mm. And this is what it is. It's like, yo, bro, anybody can do it. Anybody could do it if they put the time in and put the dedication in. Calico, you put your dedication in and you're getting what you deserve. Yeah. So yeah. I give you mad it props was, for that. And I like his motivation because that motivates me to not make- believe me. I That man's motivation and will yeah. is like no other. Because I, re- I remember when he first started up I remember when he first started up, and I remember how much music this man has put out. And, like, you know, I give him his absolute props and his flowers for that. Like, yo, he's been consistent for, like, 10-plus years. I was, uh, well, I met him 14 years ago, 15 years ago. I met Let me him. see. I graduated high school in 08. I mm-hmm. probably met him, like, in 06, mm-hmm. 05. So, what, uh, we're going on, like, 15, 16 years. So, I knew him spitting for that long. Like, he even tried to get me into a pyramid scheme, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that ass. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's how I met him a second time. But, yo, nah, but basically, um, Mussolini is a cool dude, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I met him back when he was named Basic, like. Yeah, like, it was yeah. Basic the general, yeah. Yeah. But, like, I, uh, yo, at that time I was making, like, mass shit for him. He just kept going making videos from different videos. But it's always with, either with his boys which are my, they're my boys now and shit. Well, yeah. not now, but way back then and shit. But then now it's like he's just been on a consistent run. Since basically the general, but then he dropped that name. And then he said, yo, I'm a, he's going to be the Mussolini after that. And I've yeah. seen a picture of that where he said, yo, I'm not basically the general no more. I'm Mussolini. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, from there for the – since 2017 – so now, yeah. those fucking four years consistently, he's just been knocking albums nah, after no. albums out. Yo, bro, like, I'll tell you this. This man, yeah. like, yo, roomies, just to let you know, check out Mussolini 
or the Mussolini, right? Yeah, the Mussolini. Check out the Mussolini. We'll probably drop a link to his um, Spotify in the description. But check him out. This man has been dropping music for the last 15 years consistently. Probably has, under both his name, probably has a good 15 albums. Yeah. Or more. Or right. more. But, or, yo. Or more. Yeah, like, I give him his props, OD, when it comes to the consistency. Like, yo, any artist that really wants to make it has to be at that level of at least consistency. Like, your skill matters, but <clears throat> if you could improve your skills and, like, show the the public, like, yo, I'm improving and I'm showing you on a constant basis that I'm improving, mm -hmm. yo, people are going to fuck with it because people prefer watching a person grow over, you know, just seeing the finished product, mm -hmm. you know? And I've seen that with, like, other house artists that have linked up with me. Like, I'm... Um, like one dude that I that fucked with me when I first started, um, some dude named Bear Grills. Okay. He still fucks with me to this day. You feel me? He found me out when I was like a year into it, sounding like trash. Mm. And to this day, when he hears my new shit, he'd be like, "Yo, bro." Yeah, that, I mean that, that's how it was when I dealt with Mussolini in two. Basically, I'm, I'm gonna say 2009. Yeah. It all started with like my money long, take off your thong. Like, he named that song. Take off your thong. So he already was on that pimp shit. Yeah. So I was like, damn, this nigga's into girls like the way I'm into girls like that. Let's start making tracks like that, whatever. Give them the, the little mainstream shit, then give them like the boom bap shit. Yeah. But I but I was always with the boom bap stuff. But I'ma say like this, since 2017, it just just that that Mussolini season. Yeah. Then you got um what is it? Um Uptown Bandits. Then you got like what is it? Um uh Summer. Uh, the, 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 this this album called Summer something like that. And then um you know it introduced he got features like Benny the Butcher. Yeah. On his album from Griselda. And we big started moves. yeah, moves. Big moves, big moves. We started doing shit like that. And I I started watching it. I'm like, "Damn, okay. He's getting this dude right here." Now everybody's picking up a look. Like he, he's starting to hit the radar. Yeah, he's starting yeah. to hit the radar. He's starting to hit the radios and everything. And I'm seeing it. And then I'm, I was like, yo, you know what? Just keep working, 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 working. When 2020 hit with this COVID shit, bro, we was. I mean, studios weren't open like that at all. So me and him kept working, working every day. You know what? We, we I'm about the whole team with us. And just started working with us. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I could regret not fucking doing more during the pandemic and during the lockdowns. Because I was an essential worker. So I was out working every day. Okay. But I still have that sense of like, I won't say freedom. But I still have that sense of like, yo, I still got time to do shit. And I didn't like take advantage. Like, okay, cool. The podcast came out of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I'm totally grateful for that. And I'm totally grateful for the roomies. You already know. Hit that like. Subscribe. Stop being bitches. <laughs> <laughs> right so i i'm grateful for that but when it came to like the music and this is like i'm gonna be real shit i'm gonna be real as fuck i didn't slack off but i should have been putting out music but i did use that period to like improve a lot yeah. you know what i mean so mm -hmm. it's like i really became i came into my artistry during the pandemic but i feel like i should have like publicized it at the okay. same time so unlike you guys, where y'all were just yeah, we were, dialing, we, we dialing, were, we dialing. Were, we were like, though, listen. There was like, there's like a sneaker, a sneaker shop. My man, uh, I'm gonna say his name. My man Ike ran ran a sneaker shop over there, um, on One Seven Fourth in Amsterdam over there. Yeah, on Amsterdam in the Heights, right here. So like, you know, we were we were going to the sneaker shop. Now in that sneaker shop, they had the little the little studio down there in the basement. Oh, that's all. We was recording, 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 mad stuff. Even when, when we was at, at Fredo's house, we still were recording. 2020, like, even though people were like, yo, listen, don't get don't get near me, you know, Corona and shit like Bro. that. I was like, fuck all that shit. Listen, we took risk, and then it just kept popping up. All these albums, all these different albums. Yo, when you... The grind was on. That's what we wanted to do. But that's how you got to do it, though. Yeah. Like... A, a lot of people didn't take utilize that time, and you mm -hmm. feel me. And this is what it, this is what I have to say for people that were non-essential workers and that you know got blessed with getting like the unemployment and all this other shit. Like there was a lot of opportunities for people to find themselves, a lot of opportunities for people to make money. There was a lot of opportunities for people to really like 
dig in to find out exactly what the fuck they wanted to do with themselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of people slacked off on that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people scammed off. Whatever the case mm -hmm. may be, but you feel me? Like, when it came down to it, you guys utilized their time, and it's showing. You feel me? And yet again, seeing, seeing Mussolini come from where he came from to now, bro, it's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, like, bro. it shows you, like, what what dedication really brings to the table. It, ha it had to happen. It had to yeah. happen. For, with, with, with his body of work, it just had to happen. My, my body of work, it, ha it had to happen. Like, that song, All Money, right? Yeah. We made that song in 2020, right? Yeah. Shot the video in July, um, what is it? In July in 2020 up in, or in Orchard Beach, over there, bro. Yeah. Dope-ass video. I'm gonna say it's a dope ass fucking video, like that shit right there captures um it captured um Ninth Wonder's daughter. So when Ninth Wonder's daughter heard that, she went and told and she went and told Ninth Wonder, yo, I think you should mess with this guy Mussolini because this track is banging right now. Yeah. So Ninth Wonder does his diligence, like yo, he had to play that shit so many times in his car. I didn't even know that Musa didn't know that, but I guess they crossed paths and stuff. And then Knife One that hit, he hit up Mussolini, and then from there he tells me, "Yo, bro, this song right here captures Knife Knife Wonder's ear, bro. I did the track, bro, and that's from my crib also. Like like that track right there, like it set off the tone for that underground hit. Nah, but you also have to remember, just because it comes, and this is what I have to say for all my upcoming producers, all my upcoming DJs and artists, just because you're recording in your crib or doing shit in your crib." doesn't mean that it's not a banger or it doesn't have that studio yeah, yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah. If you learn what if you learn the shit your craft mm -hmm. and you learn what the fuck you're doing, bro, yeah, yeah. it's gonna sound good. And I'm and I'm gonna keep it real, bro. I'm a bed I'm a bedroom producer, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I, I, I got I got my equipment in, in the bedroom, bro. Like I take my I take my bed I take my, my shit from my bedroom to the big studio. You know what I'm saying? I take it downtown, I take it to my man Fredo's house and I take it anywhere. Anywhere with the shit Got to sound crispy. It doesn't matter wh where you make it at. Yeah. As long as it's good quality music and that's it. And you know what you're doing and you know how to mix that shit down. You feel me? And what I, what I tell everybody is that shit like that takes time. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come overnight. Your first track ain't going to sound... Your first couple of tracks ain't going to sound good. Then you're going to yeah. get that one track that shows like your future potential. You're like, yeah. yo, how the fuck I made this shit? Mm -hmm. And then it all sounds like shit from there on for a while. Yeah. <laughs> But, it's got to be a lot of practice and perfect shit. You, yeah. Like, you know, I my beats back then they were trashy as fuck. They weren't. They weren't that great. So one day I went to an event. I would say in 2015, yeah. where I seen like Illmind. I see Illmind over there. Illmind is a dope ass producer. Shout out to Illmind. And then from there he, he's giving key pointers to a lot of people. But there's producers up there that are showcasing their beats on stage. So that means you got a producer on stage, and then you got Illmind and other judges who are, who are like producers yeah. from New York and New Jersey, whatever. That that like they're, they're like professional, but you know it's not to be an asshole. But Illmind's like, yo, bro, like where's your side chain? Where's, where's this? Wh where's, where's that? that? Yo, that kick is a little off right there. Why do you have that kick so loud? Why do you have that snare so loud? Why is the hi hats all fucked up? Yo, bro, just go home. And just go back to the lab and redraw that whole thing again. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 you would critique your beats, man. But that's the shit about it. Like, when you have producers at that level critiquing your yeah. beats and they're nitpicking and shit like that, mm -hmm. it's because you're already at the precipice of professionalism. Yeah. you're right there. You're one step, uh, one step away from being a novice and being just a regular person. Yeah. You feel me? Or somebody who uses this as a hobby to being a professional. Yeah. So when you have somebody, like, even you, like, if I showed you my beats and you're like, yo, hey, you need to fucking bring down your drums, sidechain this, put this like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you fuck around with this, it'll sound a little better. You know, from a person that, I know where my level's at and I know where your level's at. You feel yeah. me? Okay. So for you telling me, yo, ponga esto así or do this like that, I know it's coming from a place that you're like, yo, bro, you shouldn't be making these mistakes. Like, mm -hmm. you're doing rookie shit. Like, and you're just pointing that out. So when producers get offended by that, they shouldn't because it's like, yo, I'm other producers, like there are some producers that are just dickheads and don't want you to grow. Mm -hmm. But then there's others that are like, yo, 
put it like this or yo make you know maybe you should rehear that it's not sounding too right yeah. you feel me because you do get um what's it called not tone deaf but you your ear gets like used to used to it after hearing it exactly, repeatedly yeah. repeatedly repeatedly mm-hmm. so like you feel me like i know that you're gonna come from a place of like yo listen i know where you at and your level is here I'm pointing out your mistakes so that way you could keep on growing and that way next time you won't have these mistakes and mm-hmm. I could just point out little dumb shit that you probably fucking up on. Yeah. Or and it's vice versa for me, for yeah. you. Like, if I tell you something, you're not going to take it as, oh, this nigga shitting on me. You're going to take it as, yo, he heard something that I didn't hear because I'm hearing this repeatedly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, it happens. Like, that's why we go to, that's why, that, like, they make these beat critiques. You know, I, yeah. I, I go to the ones downtown. I'm always, I'm always in downtown because kind of catch the events. Some some in Brooklyn, some in Queens, but yeah. I'm always primarily downtown. Where like, you know, go to LES to, to the drum, I go to the drum yeah. NYC, and then we just check out all the beats right there. Whoever whoever's up there trying to showcase the beats. I mean, I, I I've, I've heard it. Of course, of course, yo, bro. I'd rather take the embarrassment, and then from there, tighten up and top notch my whole shit up. Oh yeah. For next time, people will be like, oh shit. This shit sound hot right here. Yeah, because of the fact that, yo, listen, when a person's listening to your shit, and this is like all bodies of work. It's like, yo, if you're good, if you're learning how to play the piano or the guitar and you play for somebody who's a master mm-hmm. and they tell you, yo, you're kind of off on your time and you're kind of off on this, is they're not coming from a place of shit on you. They're coming from a place of, yo, listen, this is how you do it and you need to tighten this up to become better. Mm-hmm. And what I've noticed is that in this society or the way society is working now, you can't really tell a person like, Yo, you're fucking up, or like you're be- like people don't like the directness anymore. Yeah, they get l- l- a little irritated and uh, offended real quick. real quick. Like, bro, I I mean that used to be me. Yeah. I used to be one of those, but then I was like, you know what? If I'm fucking up, I'm fucking up. That if, us. If I hear if I hear something like, like damn, I did this. Like, all right, fine. Change up the whole thing and just go right back because. Some rappers are gonna tell you, I don't really feel that beat, bro. No, that does. I, I, I like, I have rappers who are like, it's this is all like this music shit is all psychology, like yeah. definitely psychology. It's whatever that your brain sparks or your ear sparks quickly to that shit. If it's, if it's some whack ass sound, you're gonna be like, oh, this this is trash right now. Yeah, but I've also known that music is also subjective. So like, for instance, like I mean, I like something, but you're like, yo, this shit is a banger, and I've. Been in that room. I've been in my room with a room full of niggas, and I'm like, "Yo, this shit is whack." And they're like, "What the fuck are you talking about, bro? That shit is fire." I'm like, "Cause nah, you are your worst critic." Oh yeah, that that's, I, that's, that's, that I'm definitely am. You definitely, are your worst critic. That's that I definitely am, bro. I will you not are, lie to you. You are your worst critic, but then like when I know some shit is hot, yeah, I'm gonna send it off. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it off. Like, yo, think I think this beat is hot, but somebody might say, "Yeah, that shit is hot," but then somebody will say. You know, it's all right. It's, it's all right. But then I means to me whack. Yeah. I like I that mediocre whack to me. That mediocre shit is not flying yeah, with you. That's just like they, me, yeah. That's why I, I just let the B play play out. Like, oh, oh, this is the one right here. This is the one. All right, fine. This that that's the one. Then that's, that's the, the one. one. Whatever it is, you yeah. feel me? And I also see that with like Fuck. I forgot this, where my This shit is this shit is psychology, bro. This is like this music shit is like 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 a like like a hit of like like of like drugs and shit, bro. Yeah, you got it's, it's a hit of dopamine that everybody yeah, enjoys, yeah. especially when you get that one track that you can't get the fuck out of your head. Yeah. Like yo, bro, I be having those moments where I'm like, yo, this fucking song, why the fuck can't it get out of my head? Or like, what, have you ever had the instance where you're like, you start all, you start making a beat and you're like, yo, this shit right here is gonna be a banger. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you have to stop, and then, like, the whole day you're just playing the beat in your head. You're like, yo, I'm going to do this to that. I'm going to do that mm-hmm. to this. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Yeah. It's, it's, ha- it's happened to me man, many times. When I dig up a sample, I, I do, like, crate digging. Mm-hmm. You know, digging in the crates, go go to downtown, pick up some rare samples and shit, start messing around with it. Okay, this is it right here. Are you are you more of like a sample dude, or you make your me- Are I, you more of a piano melody kind of guy? I'm more like, I do both. Okay. I do both, but but I lean towards more of the sampling though. Okay. Okay. Like like I love I, I love like I love that like like I said it, it brings me back to that boom bap era, like where I just give 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 all that stuff right there and just get all the 
vinyl, um, all the drums that come from the vinyl. Right. All that dirty, all that dirty, nick gritty shit. Yeah, that you hear the green in it, and just and, and just put and just put it straight to my on my doll on Ableton Live. Once it's on Ableton Live, and I change up the pitch and everything, it's the different. drums are ready to go. Of Everything's course. ready to go. Nah, I feel you. I'm more of a Fruity Loops kind of guy. You know, Fruity Loops, Fruity Loops is 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 dope also. No, nah, but I do use Ableton for like live performance though. Yeah, when it comes to like. The DJing the push, shit, yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta get, like, like, Not only that, but when you're DJing with it, it like across um platform of Serato, so you could mm -hmm. fuck around. Serato, Serato, my shit. Yeah, oh yeah. Serato, oh, you shit. DJs too? Well, I use it to chop up the samples. Oh, okay, okay. I use it to chop up the samples, and then like if anything, I just use the like, Ableton Live, and then just like it chops up the, the samples right there. It tells you like how to warp everything there. Yeah. And all this stuff is like. Ableton Live just changed my whole. I won't. I won't front though. Able with Ableton, it's a lot with the automation and like chopping shit up is a lot quicker because you're able to mm -hmm. do it right on the fly. Mm -hmm. Where in Fruity Loops, you have to actually create the automation and all yeah. that. So I know what you're going through, and I love Ableton for that. But for some reason, I don't know. Like Fruity Loops is my shit. Bro. I, like like I got into Ableton because some dude like a couple years ago taught me how to use it. And I was like, yo, this is dummy. At first, yeah. it was little like I didn't I didn't understand it. It's my first time. We're using a laptop, whatever, yeah. cool. That time I didn't have a laptop. I didn't have um, Ableton Live, so I bought Ableton Live for the Mac, for the Mini Mac. I mean, for the Mac Mini, and then um, from there, started practicing every day. Yeah, and that's how I really, that's really what makes the difference is when you actually like sit there and practice your shit yeah. and actually learn your dog. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because you learn your hotkeys, you learn how to move fast and mm -hmm. shit. Because that's usually what the fucking problem is in the beginning with most producers and them trying to find out like what station they want to work with is like the difficulty of how quick the learning curve is. With Ableton, the learning curve is real quick too. Yeah, real, real, real quick. Real quick. Very, Fruity very Loops quick. is a little, a little longer because uh -huh. of all the extra shit, like all the right clicking, all create automation mm -hmm. here, create automation there. Where in Ableton, you're like, all right, cool, I want to side chain this, whap, 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 mm -hmm. cut it off. It's right there. It's right Everything there. Everything's right there. I mean, they got the storytelling mode. You can yeah. do that right there if you want for movies and stuff like that. Oh, I didn't even know they did movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, oh, like, shit. Like, like, you could, like, upload a video and then make... And then, and then you could chop up, like, the sound and shit yeah, for you to could it? Do all that what? Stuff there, I didn't yeah. even know. That's fire. Like, I, when I found out, I was like, okay, but I never did it, though. But it's there. But okay. All, but when I see how I make these beats is I got to see the waves. Yeah. I got to see all the waves come in from different channels. Some people back then they had to like make the beat on the NPC and know when them bars are coming. Yeah. No, I like seeing them. I like seeing them up close. Cause I'm a visionary. Yeah. yeah. Vision dude. Yeah, you're, you're a visual person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a visual, a visual too. Yeah. I'm a vision, but but then I gotta hear it also as well. And then when I bounce, when I bounce, when I extract it, and then bounce the disc, that's when I go like, okay, that bar is right here. Here is gonna end at. 20 uh, is gonna end at 25 right here Bam. and the next one then all this stuff and i always end the end the shit at 81 bars so what you at what that's bpm like, that like around the 70s or like I, you're, or you're running more like 140s and shit like that well with the 140s i with, with the 140 with the 140 150 i do the trap beats yeah, yeah. and then with the with the 80s with, with the 84s and 85 86 never sometimes 90 yeah. But I like keeping it at 86, 87. Those are the boom bad beats. The, yeah. the laid back beats. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, when it comes to house music, you got a little up to, like, 120, No, no, house, you could go from yeah. 116 mm -hmm. to, like, 150, depending on the genre. Yeah. Because usually where I'm at, I'm usually doing... It's either main main stage, which is like standard EDM, so that's big room house. Mm -hmm. Either I'm doing that, deep house, afro house, or, like, fucking Moombatone, which is like a reggaeton no, mix. No, of course. Moombatone, so, Moombatone, that shit is hot. Moombatone is taking over, and I'm, what I'm yeah. liking now, too, is um, is a genre called um, Gondra, mm -hmm. or, or Gacha, or some, it's some Spanish shit, it sounds like, um, it's like Big Room meets reggaeton, but they took the fucking bass out of it. Okay. So it's just like a kick drum. And there's like no like heavy sub or like heavy bass behind it. Okay. So it'll just be like a kick drum, pat, 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 with no 808, nothing behind it. That's but it, it sounds dope, mm -hmm. but 
I don't know. For me, I'm like, yo, I need that. You need the bass. You I need, need that. that thumping bass. Yeah. That, 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 but it, it sounds good. Like, if it's for, like, a quick remix, it sounds dope. Like, that. that that's what gets, like, the party jumping when they yeah. hear that good bass right there. They yeah. can hear the, the melody, but ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. I mean, you got to have that bass right there. Yeah. And also, the, the bass also depends on, like, the mood of the crowd, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel you on that. But, like, with House, and I've noticed this a lot, it's like, you could go anywhere with it, and I fucking love it because you can make the saddest song and you can still dance to it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I and fucking And it becomes enjoy. a popular hit. Everybody yeah, and it'd, be, it, and it'd be like, oh, I want to kill myself. It'd be like, <laughs> it'd be the most craziest hook, but it'd be like, yo, this mm -hmm. shit is the fire shit in the a, world. A, a hip hop song that can't, like the hook of it. Yeah. And then just make, make a house beat to that, make a house record to that shit. And Nigga, I did that with, um, you see the joint that Marshmallow and Tokisha did, Estelo? Yeah, yeah. I remixed that shit. That shit's fire right mm. now. Right now, my SoundCloud, that shit buzzing out in the yard, my SoundCloud. Them niggas got it. So, yeah, check that shit out. Bam. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. Man. But now, nah, I do like a couple... I like doing um a lot of hip-hop to house remixes, too. Like, I like doing that shit. That's good. That's good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, 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 that makes you like you have an ear for house. But, uh, but then I remember a couple of... Like, was it, it was like... A couple of years ago, you were talking about like EDM already. Yeah, I remember that you were talking about EDM. You were talking about all that stuff. And you were like, you were talking about main stage. Yeah, like I was doing that also, but then I, I kind of stopped for a minute because I, I said like, you know what, I'm gonna choose this lane right here. Nah, and, yo, bro, and, and, and get with these dudes because now it's now it's be, becoming a, a good progression. Got my niggas from Colorado. I ain't never been in Colorado until last year, and this and this year yeah. also. You know what I'm saying? Like, like my nigga Finesse. Shout out to, to Old Finesse, Blanco, Windsor, and my man Basement. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Niggas hear Moose. When they hear Moose, niggas hear me. Yeah. And then they hear Izzy, Rewind, Fuego. They hear the, they hear the yeah. resume already. They, you they feel me? Shit. And, I'm like, I was and like, it's already certified yeah, yeah, because and, of the and, bangers. And, and the shit got, this just started getting crazy and crazy. I was like, damn. I wasn't expecting it, but... Once you work so many hours and stuff, because I'm an essential worker also. Yeah. To keep it real. But right after that, I'm a different person. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. They got like, one, once the hat comes off, yeah. Dolly. Yeah. But that's the thing about it. Like, the hot shit about it is like, in this, in this neighborhood or like in this environment that we're in, like, there's, when it comes to like music that's prevalent and a lot of connections, hip hop and reggaeton and dembo. They all gonna, going. They're all going all, right all, now. All urban shit. All the urban shit. You feel me? Like, and that's that's fucking amazing because it's like when you become a producer and you start linking up with all these different artists, you can place yourself where you want to go and mm -hmm. where you want to be and to meet the people that you want to meet. Exactly. You feel me? And if you find that one artist like you did with Moose or, you know, but y'all work already cool. But, mm -hmm. you know, when you, once you link up with that artist that, you know, y'all complement each other, it's easy to take over the world, yeah, exactly. bro. Exactly. Yeah, bro. But the only thing is that, like, you know, me and no, let Nelly know had a conversation and shit. Shout out to Nelly No. He should be over here in a few, but he runs on Dominican time, guys. <laughs> 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 um, we had a conversation. Yeah. You know, like, um, he said over the phone, bro, like, a lot of people, you know, different artists who are already made in the game. And earning good good dollars, great dollars in there, they like to shot they like to shout out up, uptown a lot. Yeah, they shout out up, uptown a lot, but then now you don't even have too many people from from uptown like shining and shit. It's, it's been, like a major blockage with that. But that's been around since the nineties, bro. Like yeah, yeah. I've heard of like Hispanic artists like back in the nineties getting signed to like Def Jam and getting blackballed because they were Latino. Yeah, like the Latino revolution when it comes to like mainstream artistry mm -hmm. and I'm not talking like bachata, merengue and salsa because those genres are beyond mainstream you know what I mean mm -hmm. those are like household fucking genres even w when we talk outside of the US everybody fucks with Spanish music everybody mm -hmm. dances it everybody fucks with it outside of the US the US is different because here the culture is more dictated according to what's mainstream mm -hmm. you feel me but where I'm going with this, once I get my <laughs> thought back, yeah, yeah, yeah. is, um, fuck. All right. So, fuck, I forgot where I was going with this. 
We're talking about like the uptown, like like. Oh yeah, yeah. So like even back in the nineties, like when they were blocking Latinos from getting like major record deals and like doing and doing the shit that we were supposed to be on, we didn't. We got blackballed mm-hmm. and shelved a lot. You feel me? And then on top of that, a lot of the rappers from that era that came up, you know, especially like Jay Z, Nas, mm-hmm. they fucked with us heavy. Yeah. You feel me? And a lot of their success previous, you know, their previous street success was because of connections with the Dominicans and course, the Spanish yeah. people from yeah. up here. You know what I they mean? Never, it's like they rep it, they come to the the parties, they come to the restaurants, they can't they come to the clubs, but not one. Maybe they had they had one, but then they blackballed him also. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like he was on his way. He do he did go platinum. He did go gold. He got a lot of shit. Got a good resume. But then they're trying to blackball more people. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like that's why, I, like, you know, like, like I never say because people ask me, "Yo, what are you?" Because automatically people will, th- will think like he's black. Yeah. Which I am. Yeah. I am black, but Dominican also. Yeah. But they won't know. They won't know that until I start speaking Spanish. Of course not. You know what I'm saying? So like, I get I get Hawaiian and Filipino. Oh wow. Yeah, I don't get Dominican at all. I, don't, I get Asian or black. I, I, re- I rarely get Dominican. Yeah. There's some, some people be like, "Oh, he's, he, they don't know what what the hell I'm like." They just be like, "Yeah, you." But I leave it alone. Hell yeah. I leave it alone. I let the music speak for itself. That's how it gotta be though. Uh, that's it. Pero tú sabes, it's like now with like you know people like Bad Bunny, you know fucking Cardi B and you know I really don't want to use Cardi B as an example yeah. but I have to because she really she's really breaking down that door for at least Spanish women mm-hmm. to get into hip hop mm-hmm. and I'm not even talking like you know ghostwriting I'm talking about mainstream upfront personal making the big bread you yeah. feel me Bad Bunny he J Balvin they're undeniable at this point nobody in any music industry could deny those two no. So it's like now people are seeing that yo, Hispanic people are coming out with all these urban tracks, and we're banging. You feel me? Like the dembow sound is taking over. You feel me? Like even even hip hop artists are trying to get on dembow tracks. Yeah, I heard. So it's like heard, they're trying to they're trying to flip it and take the sound. I heard. But it's like why flip it and take the sound when you can easily collab with you know people like El Cherry or Rochi or even some uptown dudes from up here like. You feel me? You got my dudes like a Wild Boy Cuba that's a spitter. You got my dude um who else up here that I got El, uh, the Menace. You got all all the people yeah, that yeah. knows who fucks it. with. You feel me? You got mass spitters up here who do the dumb bullshit that niggas could easily be like, yo, come on, whoop and exactly, and yeah. blow them up. But some but sometimes like nah, I don't want to deal with that artist or whatever and all that stuff. I'm like, yo, boy. But if he gives you the bag or she gives you the bag, you won't mess with them or something like that? Or like the, it's, always, it's always about, like, the labels or something like that. That's yeah, like, it's always, they get all some other shit. They get the label or, like, management or distribution. Yeah. It's always some bullshit. And I'm like, bro, like, you can mm-hmm. eat... If it's a person that who's on the come up, that shouldn't even be a problem because you can easily break down a one-track contract. You know, feel me? Like, you can easily do the splits because there's nobody... You're not dealing with his whole team. You're dealing probably with him, maybe a manager or a publicist. Yeah, you yeah. feel me? His team is super small compared to you. Mm-hmm. So it's like, bro, the splits is easy. So for you not to like take a person whose sound is polished and is ready to take the step into the, into that level is fucking absurd because it's like, bro, you're trying to take the sound. At least you could bring it. At least what you could do while you're trying to take the sound is bring us up with you. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Nobody it, wants to give you a lifting hand. If anything, you gotta you gotta make it out somewhere. If you can't blow up uptown, then you gotta go somewhere else to blow up. Yeah. And that's that's, that's always been the case, right there. And that's the most suck ass shit ever because yeah. like, bro, like there's so many talented people up here. So many fucking. Ta- I'm talking like, and not only in music. I'm talking about art, artists, authors, chefs, mm-hmm. fucking. You name it, we yeah. have it. And mm-hmm. people at like these fucking insane levels of talent aren't getting shined. Like, yeah. you feel me? Like, shout out to my homegirl stuff from Natives. Like, she does like um she does graphic design and she does clothing. 
Okay. She's linking up with a whole bunch of people, and she's running this um company called Natives, yeah. which is like a anti gentrification thing around here. You probably seen her stickers. It says Natives. It looks like that old school seventies font. Okay. Yeah. So she's real. She's getting real big right now. Like, and it's like, bro, like we need more expo. We need people to help other artists too. Like she's got her shit done, but like she's a prime example of like. The talent that we have here, you feel me? You're a prime ex- you're a prime example of the talent that we have here. Mm-hmm. Mussolini is a prime example of the mm-hmm. talent. So it's like, if if we have so much talent concentrated within what f- a four five mile square radius of mm-hmm. uptown. A matter of fact, I'm gonna include Harlem. So what a ten mile square radius mm-hmm. we got. There's so much talented people, and it's like, bro, like, exactly, yeah. why the fuck they always, aren't? They, I'm sorry, to cut you off. No, go ahead, go ahead, man. They always look at Harlem. Harlem, cause you know, I, 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 like, I, like, like I'm not gonna lie, you know, Dipset there, Cameron's there, whatever. Cool. Yeah. But those rappers, they come over here too on that side. Yeah. Coming to Dykeman all the time, they always all shouting on Dykeman, but they don't have the that Dykeman rapper. No, nah, not have, at all. They don't have that Washington Heights rapper. No, nah, not at all. Inwood, Inwood rapper. They probably got some Bronx rapper, but it's not. Up there, yeah, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, nah, but the rappers in the Bronx, all them drilled kids right now, they wild, they, bro. I mean, they do, they're doing their thing. Nah, they're making they, good they, music, they, but they, they wild. They, them kids is wild, yeah, they, baby. They're they doing their thing. But, you yeah. know, but I just stay away from the drill stuff. My, yeah. my shit is, is all that pimp hip-hop. So I do all that pimp shit. Give, uh, them, give them all that pimp beats. Pimp, nah, I feel you, I feel pimp, you. All that shit. I, I stay in my own lane. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, fucking, I love fucking drill music. And it's not even for the message. I just love the production of drill. Okay. Like, the production of drill, fucking, that fucking rhythm catches me so fucking okay. much. Quick, real quick, there's a question of the day. Um, real quick, because I know that, um, um, you know, you're going to have crazy fans. Yeah. So very, like, you're going you're gonna to be, like, that type of producer where you have fans. Because, you know, you're a very humble guy. You deserve it, bro. You've been doing this for a long time. Dude, they're going to ask you. And we want to ask you first. We want to be the first to ask you. What does calico mean? Like, what does that mean? Where you got like, that from? Where, like, I'm going to say it like this. Like, one day, I was listening to a big pun acapella. Okay. Yeah. Right? So, I wanted to take the sample where he said, with the twin calico, coming out with the twin calicos. Ooh. So, then, that right there was like, I was like, damn. I should call myself twin calico. It, it used to be twin calico. Okay. But then I dropped the, the twin calico to just calico. Wait, do you have a twin? No. Nah, oh, okay. the, the twin calico means like the two guns. The two guns. Yeah. Two gotcha. double guns and shit. Which like the fucking... So calico, calico, That means calico, going to kill the calico, calico means a gun. A gun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm saying like, you know what? Change, drop the twin calico. Put calico to hit, man. Mm. So I was like, because some people go like, or oh, you, cause like they look at my screen name. I mean like my... My IG, yeah. or oh, you're a hitman, or oh, my cousin does that. I'm like, wait a minute, you just you just indicted Uh-oh. your cousin now. I yeah, know, like why man. you snitching, like, bro? Wait, wait, why you snitching? I'm not a hit. I'm not a hitter as a killer. You're a hitter I'm in the, the music. I, I'm a hitter in the music. Yeah, that means he kills positive. the beats, bro. I, I, I don't kill people. He kills the beats, my man. Kill the beats. That's it. Human beings are so humans. like. Matter of fact, because I had a crazy experience when I fucking realized that you know production and like DJing was the shit that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. When you realized that you wanted to become a producer, did you have like an epiphany moment or was it just like, oh shit, you know what? I really fuck with this. I want to do it. Who well, was it that um Swiss Swiss Beats? Yeah. Back then in, in 98 and the you hear about Matter of um, fact, shout out to Swiss. I actually met him a couple of times. Swiss my Beats. Swiss Beats. my cousin my cousin's um my cousin's hu- ex-husband, his cousin was married to Swiss. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before shout he, out, shout he, out to D. D. Uh, the original starter of Rough Riders is uh, mm-hmm. Swiss Beats' uncle. I know him personally. Mm. Yeah. Right. But yeah, you were saying. What happened was that when I seen Swiss like making all these beats on the Casio, mm. and I see all the producers and how they were making this stuff, whatever. Like I wanted to take part of that. I used to go yeah. to downtown. I was in the school called Graphic Arts. Oh, I know Graphic Arts. Yeah. Then I said, "Fuck that school." Went to environmental studies. Oh. And then um, did that did that transfer? Yeah, oh, really. My Basically, brother won. Then my sister. You probably you know my you know my sister. You have to know. Pro- I anyway, probably. Continue. I mean, yeah. graduate. I graduated in two thousand and two okay. in in high school. Yeah. So um, 
what happened was um but we a bunch of old niggas. Yo, that bro, was twenty years ago, bro. I graduated twenty oh eight. Twenty years ago. Well, yeah, you graduated bro. high school. I graduated high school in 98, 99, nigga, 99. None of us is younger than ten years of graduating high school. Oh my god, That's we old as shit, nigga. Wow. So then, um, what, I feel like a viejo. I used to go to Sam Ash yeah. Guitar Center and just play around with the MPC, play around with different production before the MPC started getting popular. Yeah. You know, because like, let's face it, Dr. Dre kept putting those pictures up there, mm. and that made me want to buy one, and then mm. I bought one because of him. Yo, I was, gonna, I was talking but, about that uh, as, a, as a beat maker, uh, MPC, right? That it's like, it sounds more original. That's like, oh, if you yeah. don't I'm, I'm going to tell you that, something like, right now. And I might get pushback for this. It's not the gear, it's the ear, baby. Okay. It's not the gear, it's the ear. There you go. That, the that, gear is that's the true ear. also. Right. But at that time. Oh, that at that time. Chronic, it was, when Chronic dropped out, yeah. everybody who, who who wanted to make music got that PC. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm um, going to that real quick. I know. Um, sorry to interrupt you. But um, what's the difference in quality of making a beat? On the MPC versus Ableton Live. Mm. Well, I use Ableton Live because you know what it was that uh, MPC. You got how people people use it differently. They either got like the, you know the the MPC right here, with mixing it with vinyl records. Yeah. They'll take the vinyl record, and and then like Import record it. record it. Oh wait, into real quick, sorry. Shout out to Risbel La Sanita. We got the producer, Calico the Hitman, and the other day here. These are the guys. Check your email. Risbel, check out your email. Tenemos cuatro beats ahí para ti. Están esperando yo dos para ti. Uh-huh. Next time talking to the mic, papi. Oh, I'm sorry. Shout out to Risbel, la Domi Italiana. She's on the live right now. Estos son los dos productores. The other day in Calico the Hitman, terminamos dos emails con los beats de ellos. Están esperando que tú lo... And then el C. Anyway, she speaks Spanish, so. Yo, know. bro, it doesn't matter what language she speaks. She got on one of my joints, it's a hit. That's it, that's and it. just like Calico's, you got on his yeah, joints, it's a hit. So, yo, she yeah, has both got, of the guys that I send the beats to her. So. Yo, you got yeah. the you got the next. It's crazy. That's you got the right? you got the next greatest hip hop producer to my right, and you got the next greatest EDM artist yeah, sorry, on your I'm left, sorry, bro. Right, tough. Right, so tough. it's like. My nigga, this is, like, the one thing I will say about in the house, and, like, this is not, like, fucking, shout out, yet again, shout out to JB, shout out to Manny, you know, I fucking love y'all niggas, you feel me? Like, I feel that my team has been blessed by this, because a lot of people have came through these doors that, yeah. you feel me, have given us experience, have given us growth, and given us insight. Yeah. You feel me, Calico, you gave me mad insight, you feel me? It may not seem, um, look like it now, but... You feel me? There's a lot of gears turning up in here. Mm -hmm. So, you feel me? We're definitely going to work on that. Mm -hmm. But besides we that... that EDM hip-hop beat. What's up? Nigga, that's called trap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's called oh, trap, bro. Yeah. 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 EDM trap. Yeah, yeah, EDM trap, bro. Yo, Calico, for those watching the video right now, you're New York-based. We already know what Calico means. The hit man. Mm -hmm. The beats. You don't, hit, you don't kill people I don't for a kill living. kill people, no. He, he kills, kills the beats. beats. Kills beats, um, man. Now, you know... Your logo on Instagram, Los Angeles Dodgers. You have the Los I'm Angeles Dodgers. I'm a Dodgers, Dodgers fan, shirt. baby. But, okay. but, but, you know, Dodgers originated from Brooklyn. Yes, yes. yes. So it is New York. At the end it, of the day. it originated from Brooklyn. But I'm yeah. a, I'm a Dodgers fan because that, like 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 that's like my that's like, that's like my team, bro. Like I did the hit, I did my history on it. You know, I'm a Yankee fan first. Of course, I'm a Yankee fan first. Of course, born of raised, course. Born and raised in. You know, For the record, he's a Yankee fan first. Yeah, right? Don't I'm judge Yankee him. Fan first. Or he might Calico. Oh, my <laughs> secondary team is the Dodgers. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a dumb question because I don't follow sports. Because I love because not for nothing I love Los Angeles. Like I never been. I've been in Los Angeles. I've been in the city of Los Angeles and, and I love it out there. You know. I never I never been to LA. Out of Los Angeles. I know that's no, the place. For you not to be a, a guy who follows sports, you know a lot about sports. Yeah, because I have all y'all motherfuckers who do follow sports, and so you, I'm here. And you're an information machine. Like, oh, you know, man, but shit. yo, bro. You're like me. Like, you have a lot of useless information. A lot of useless but information. But then it becomes useful because... But the thing about it, and I, and I really hate this shit, I hate when people fucking learn shit and they don't use it or teach it. 
Like, I feel that people that learn shit and just hoard information suck. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and talking about that, we had this conversation before us. Um, personally. Yeah. And me, me and you, too, Calico. I th- the other night, we had that information. Mm. Like, what's the point? Um, I get it. People um, go through struggles, and they're like, okay, I did this on my own, whatever. But no, really, nobody really does anything on their own. And no. People have connects, or somebody puts them on. No, shout, uh, out to, shout out to Manny for this quote right here. Yeah. He says success is a, sh- is a social thing. It's a yeah. social event. Yeah. Success is a social event. But what I'm saying is, um, I just lost my train of thought, but what I'm saying is, uh, um, um, you know, like, at the end of the day, um, you know, um, you have to uh, show and prove, right? And once you show and prove, um, you have to get out there. You have to expose yourself. You have to yeah. do less in the third. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, in this industry, you have to think about the the mu- the business part of it, right? And if you're not involved in the business part of it, I mean, you're not going to go that's anywhere. Not, but that's not the only thing, too. You yeah. have to remember the attention span of people now. Yeah. Is very short. Yeah. So if you're not constantly in their face, constantly yeah. being shown, constantly, yeah. you know, showing that you're putting out work, and yet again, this goes back to what we were saying mm-hmm. earlier. People love the story of growth. Yes. People will invest in the wackest artists just to see them get to fucking Jay Z status. Yeah. You feel me? They will follow them from the beginning all the way to the end. And yet again, I've had EDM artists that follow me from when I was trash to yeah. now. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like people love. Watching, watching a main character grow story, into yeah, himself. Story, yeah, they love yeah. the story. Yeah. So it's like, bro, Calico got a crazy story. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. Twenty five years doing this shit, yeah. and you getting into it, nigga. Yo, what the fuck? And, and the the whole part of it is like, like when you have a passion and you believe in it, right? You believe in that passion. Um, the population, let's say, in the United States, is three hundred and something million, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of the day. There could be 250 million of those people that don't like your shit, but there's still 100 million that might. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or even, um, in New York, say, we're New York based, right? New York has, what, like 17 million people? New York City? Yeah, or New, New York State? New York State in general. About, right? I, think, I think about, about 16, 17. 16, yeah. Okay, so let's Should say be about that. out of the 16, a million like your shit. That's a million people that like your shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's not only here, you could have 100,000 from Florida. 100,000 for California. Next thing you know, in Europe, whatever, next thing you know, you have a following of like... Bro, yeah, listen, so if you never, could, if you could get... If never you could give get, up. Never it, give up on your dreams and your yep, passion. Never, 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 never give yeah, up. You can't. And it's hard because sometimes you get that's discouraged all. because of all the bullshit going on. But Not only that, like, For too. instance, 25 years, he could have said, fuck this shit. Yeah, yeah. Bro, there, there were many times where I said, yeah. fuck this shit. There were many, Bro, I, look. I want to tell everybody like, like this. There were many times I said, fuck this shit. But then I said, you know what? Keep going. I, I just told myself, keep going, keep going. You got my parents saying, yo, you're not going to amount to this shit. You're not going to do anything. You're not going to... Mm. And friends, even close friends of mine saying, yo, you, you're not that Those great. are the worst critics. You all this friends. stuff, whatever. Bro, But then listen. when they start seeing you pull strings and they see you coming up, going on tours... Everybody but, has a change but, of heart now. But now, but that's the thing about it. The closest, the people closest to you are the ones that you have to turn into believers. Yes. Yeah. You people, people that don't know you will follow your dream because of the fact that they, that's all they know of you. Exactly. They, that's all they know of you. It's not like fucking, like for instance, no, you know me. You personally know me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see me fucking sound like shit. You feel me? But you hear me now. It's like. You've seen the progression, but even even seeing the progression is not enough because of the fact that you've been there daily. Yeah. You feel me? So it's a lot of like, to you, it still sounds the same from day one. But from somebody who doesn't know you, nigga, day one and day 100 sounds crazy different. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And also, not only that, that um, a lot of times, like your friends and your family, um, um, they're not accustomed like to seeing somebody, like, let's say a family, like, Especially us, right? You guys are first generation um, Dominicans, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Immigrant parents. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like they came here looking for a dream, trying to make money, trying to survive. You know what I mean? Like, and we're first generation, so for them, it's like, okay, like, are you gonna go to school? Are you gonna become a professional? Because that's all they know. Like, that's what they will talk. But um, like, your friends and your family are the first ones that, that kind of like critique your work and they kind of judge you because they're not used to that. 
right? Until you actually really make it, mm-hmm. right? Um, how both of you guys are producers. Yeah. How has that experience been? I know your mother probably told you the same thing your dad. Like, bro. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you invested so much money and so much bro, time listen. in music? You're not going to make it. This time. Get a real job. Ah, Yo, listen. Right? That's how it was in my household. Yeah. That, that's how it was. Bro. Oh, you're not going to make it and all that stuff, whatever. Why you keep buying so many equipment for and all that shit? Why you keep doing this? Porque tú estás gastando ese dinero. Yeah, all, all the time. Tú estás comiendo mucho aparato aquí. Esta vaina. Yo, I didn't listen to that shit. I didn't listen to none of that shit. I kept going, going, going. Until one day, my mom opens the door in my room and shit and goes like, oh, I like this shit. (laughs) You know what's crazy? I never expected it because he hates it. I got a story about that about that same thing that happened today. Dominican, the American parents, the old school ones, like our our school. They hate hip hop. They hated that shit. They hated that shit. That us. So I took one freaking bolero song I think Jose, Jose, whatever, what, or Los Negros. That's what it was. Los Negros. I uploaded that shit to my dog. Boom. I make a beat out of that shit. She fucking comes into my room like, yo, I like this shit. See? Yeah, because it's something that she can relate to. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? And that brings me to a story that I was just saying right now. Yo, listen. My mom, God bless her soul. The roomies all know about Mom Duke, so they know stories about her. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Most sweetest lady you'll ever meet. Mm-hmm. She did not... Yo, listen, when it came to music, my DJing, even to this podcast. Smoking weed. <laughs> listen, no, whoa, whoa. I'm going to talk about that it's right a, now. It's a right? She it wasn't in support of this because of the fact that, you feel me, she thought that I was going to be end up being a doctor. I had, you know, a full scholarship to Princeton. I nice. was set. You nice. are a doctor. You're nice. a doctor of EDM. Doctor of I, music. I, that's that's what I am. And, and I'm all, you're a, you're a NASA. Nigga, I'm trying to go to space, baby. If I could, <laughs> yo, listen. If no, I could, you do go to space, yo, you listen. Can lift it, yo. That's a different type of space. You feel me? Listen, if I have the opportunity to go to space and do like a a fucking private pop up show mm-hmm. for the astronauts at the ISS, <laughs> I would take that shit in a heartbeat. Oh my god, in a heartbeat, I would take that. Yeah. But listen, right? Doesn't believe in none of this shit. She thought I was wasting my life. Whatever. Yeah. Today. I go to her crib. She says, yo, she calls me. She's like, yo, papi, I got some leftover food. Come eat. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. You already know. So I go over there. I sit down. I'm eating. She was like, so I saw your YouTube. Oh, I saw really? your podcast. Wow. That's See? Great. That's and I, she was like, and I was like, oh, shit. I thought she was going to bitch at me. She was like, I like it. It fits you. The only thing I could say is stop smoking weed on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Ma, but yeah. that's the thing but to do. I got to keep doing it. That's I got to keep doing it. They already the, know me for it. That's the culture clash. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Things, but, are, things are evolving. Things evolve. Well, mm-hmm. It was a taboo before. It's not a taboo anymore. But that's the thing about it. She's seen. She's All right. What I'm saying is that she's seen the product. Yeah. And she didn't think that. And that's the thing with a lot of immigrant parents and a lot of undereducated parents. Mm. They don't feel that their children will amount to something great yeah. or even be able or to... Or even educated. Or even have a certain education level. Or parents are educated and they mm-hmm. thought like... Yeah. Or fucking... They don't believe that their child could be at the level of professionalism exactly. that they're at. Yeah. Because you feel me? It's like... what My mom was, my mom was like, yo, you spent what? Four thousand dollars buying everything, but that's the whole thing. They come from poverty, so for them, everything when it comes it's to different. money, it's survival. Yeah, so they see something that you're doing a craft. They're like, okay, how are you gonna survive with it? Yeah. How are you gonna pay your bills? Like they feel like, oh my god, what if something happens to me? That's the thing, you're gonna though. be here by your by yourself, by yourself. in this world. But, but that's how the, you gonna survive? But that's but when the thing you about see them, that your craft is like building, and you're actually exactly, making yeah, exactly. something to make a profit. Think about it, you gotta think about it like this, like. Ruben from La Mega and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He did all that shit. Yeah. They probably, he probably got that same, same shit also. Yeah, like, yeah. how you gonna survive? How you gonna do this, whatever? But so, oh, so how- one day they say, yo, this this radio station is gonna blow up and look, look, look where it's at right now. Yeah. yeah, and that's how it is. It's just keep on going and keep yeah. doing it. Like, yo, bro, like I tell a lot of people, my nigga, like, yo, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. Democracy wasn't done overnight. Yeah. You feel me? So, like, even with. You know, you're going to work years before you're considered a professional. Yeah. And that's the thing about it. Me and Calico, we're in this profession where, you know, one, it's very, very doggy dog. Yeah. We have to admit that. Hey. Production and hip, especially in the hip hop industry is very competitive. 
very doggy dog. A lot of people talk shit about you. A lot of people want to bring you down. And it's a, a little lot, bit easier now because back in the days, you had to prove yourself. If you was talking shit on the record, like they, there will be cats that come and test you. Like, oh, you gangster? Nah, this is nah, going on. No, bro. Going, but it's not Yo, as, bro. As, as, as no, no you're, I, you're absolutely fucking wrong, bro. I'm right back now, hip hop is the most gangster right now. No, I'm talking about back in the days. Like, you oh, have crews and pro Oh, yeah, yeah. But, nigga, I'm talking about right now. If it's, you're talking about it's, 2022, it's, it's, it's way more gangster. They'll go, they'll come up and shoot you and do it on yeah. fuck, and yeah, do it on Facebook it's, Live, bro. It's, 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 What's that it's, it's, artist's name? The one that got shot? Uh, little TJ, whatever the fuck? What not even, bro. Listen, I'll give you the perfect example. Yeah. Boom. There was a drill artist that came to the Bronx from LA. Yeah. They killed... Sure, they, yeah, yo, that dude, yeah. Yo, bro, they, the killed them two, they killed them in two the blocks pharmacy. away from my job. Oh, yeah, in the in grocery the store. In, yeah, in, the, no, in a pharmacy. pharmacy. Bro, and them little kids didn't have any mask on, bro. Yeah. Just because, you know, and that's the thing about it, like, hip-hop right now, with the younger generation, yeah. they are the most gangster the out of, oh, out of right the four still, generations that have been in hip-hop, bro. Yeah. They are the most gangster. Yeah, they will smoke you. You know yeah. what it is? With that, no that, problem. That, it's, it's that drill shit, that, that yeah. drill rap. And yeah. the younger generation, they don't, un, like, they don't understand the concept of reality. Because of technology, social media, you know, they, it's all about clout and this, likes and, and whatever. The thing is, they were born into that. So they don't know, like, well, we're a little bit older, so we weren't, like, you weren't born into that type of technology. It wasn't, didn't exist. Well, I, let's say I kid, grew up, we, we grew up transitioning into transitioning it. Transitioning into uh -huh. it, but it's different yeah. if you're born into it. Like, a kid who's 18 right now, right, he's already ex been exposed to it, where, like, he doesn't know, like, sometimes they don't know the repercussions of what it is to do something on social media. Once you be coursing on social media, even if you delete it, it's saved forever there. Yeah. That's like a profile of your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, they don't understand the, the, the concept of reality and the consequences of, of, of what could happen if you do the wrong shit, right? Exactly. But for them, it's like, okay, like, okay, I'm doing this to get clout, right? Or to get likes or whatever. But mm -hmm. then when the shit hits the fan, if the boys come knocking on their door or they get yep. in trouble, then oh shit, damn. Because they change the whole thing, but the whole that's the whole that's the whole thing. That because that's the thing about it, nigga. That's the only way right now for anybody to get anywhere is through clout. Because for instance, yeah. you could be the best producer on the planet. Yeah. If nobody knows you, you could put out banging beats every yeah. day. You'll probably get one or two likes. Yeah, that's you feel me? Like, Yo, having your name in the credits it goes a lot. It goes a long is, way, but it's great. People but you, like, okay. but you could, but you can see it. People who are putting in work, yeah. they're not getting recognition. They're not. They're getting probably a few likes on their shit. Yeah. Nobody's really checking out their music. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about great artists here. Great, like people that should be signed. Yeah. Not getting no traction. Yeah. But the dude who is, show, is showing that he's beating people up every day, puts out this whack-ass track, yeah. he's getting millions of views because of the fact of all the other shenanigans he's yes, doing. Exactly. It's, it's, sometimes, it's not even about like their, their music anymore. Like, what it's about doing. the story. About That's a lot of artists. You see them, they record every day a live or a reel or something of doing something crazy. It's not even about their music, but they have their music playing in the background. Yeah. Shopping or Kaseya or doing a prank or whatever. But it's because that's part of the, of the algorithm now. You have to um, um, be um, connected. You so got to put content you know out there. You know what I mean? You got to put content yeah, out yeah, there, bro. Yeah. And yeah. then, unfortunately, it's negative content that makes, but then, uh, I guess, the I, likes. I look at it like this, though. Like, for how long could, could they do this, though? Because that's an indictment right there for them. They're gonna, yeah, They're all going to get indicted. Yeah. But for a lot them, of them they, do. They don't give a fuck because they want their notor the notoriety. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and, they all, and they're also figuring out, yo, listen, I'm... 15, 16, if I do some wild shit right now, I'm going to get charged as a juvenile. Yeah. And then on top of that, I'll probably be out by my early 20s. All right. So they're not thinking about losing their life. They're thinking about how how the repercussions of that one event is going to benefit mm, them, yeah. which truly it doesn't. And that's doesn't. how the record labels are signing them. Yeah. Yep. So, well, um, quick example. Um, when um, um, uh, XX um, Tentacion, right, whatever, Yeah. and um, um, Young Dolph, when they got killed and Nippy... Uh, Nipsey Hussle, when they got killed, there was guys, um, kids going on the social media saying, claiming that they were the ones that killed them, Man. just to get the clout real quick. Yeah. So that throws off law enforcement. Law enforcement obviously has a hand in social media. They, of course. You know, same way, especially in the murder investigation. Not only somebody that. who's infamous. And they just did it. Like, they didn't even know the legal repercussions of even saying something like that. Bro. Incriminating yourself, but they did it just because to get that. 
that oh. instant like. Yeah. Bro, and it's crazy because knowing of the f- that they didn't even have nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. You know bro. what I mean? Like it's crazy. Bro, people are gonna clout chase all day long yeah. because of the fact of that's how the algorithm is working. Yeah. You feel me? There's gonna be hoops and hurdles people are gonna jump through just to get the fucking thousand likes or a million that's likes. Why, that's why me I stay out of that shit. I say out of the realm. Yeah. I, st- I said, like, like, like yeah, I said. but you feel me? You have a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you feel me? You have Mussolini. You got your other artists that you work with mm-hmm. that are bringing you to the forefront. Yeah. You feel me? When we're talking about like producers that don't have that or artists that don't have a team, mm-hmm. that's the way of getting eyes on them by themselves. Mm-hmm. You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. Yo, real quick question. You think that, I mean, and this is. Um, we could disagree agree to disagree, but we know the, the facts. Um, but um, it's always been like kind of like a thing like in, in, in mainstream media or just like the way that um, the, the corporate world looks at hip hop. Like, you know, like or just, you know, let's say Caucasian people from the suburbs that are um, they are entitled or whatever the fuck it is. Um, their kids are growing up listening to hip hop, so they're switching yeah. it up. But what I'm saying is they look at us, OK, like. This happened because a song influenced this kid to do this and the third. Do you think that hip hop has played a part in that? Um, that this young generation thinks that what the rapper is saying, they could do it too and get away with it, like type of shit. You know what I mean? Some, yeah, I think, I think so. Because it, it it goes back to like yesterday. I was listening to Eminem's um, second album, okay. um, the, the Marshall, Marshall Matters and all that stuff right there. Like um, he got that song. I never knew I knew I knew I to get to get this kid to do this thing right here. Like it was cra- it's crazy how Marshall explained that, and I was like, damn. Yeah. So you got this rapper, this white rapper from Detroit, blew up, blah blah, right, way back then. Now you got little kids listening to him. Um, you know, he said, I don't do white music. I don't do black music. I make fight music. And then, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People want to fight because of yeah. that shit right there. And you, also, like, that song, um, um, Stan. Um, where he kills, where he kills yeah. his baby moms and throws her in the trunk? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, This is a fan you, writing him a letter. You got, you got yeah. some, some, kids will, some kids will do that. Yeah. yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? but I'm also going to disagree a little bit yeah. because I don't feel that it's the music that's influencing them. Yeah. But exactly, it part of it. I it is a very it minor part. A kid, but what I but but what I feel no, I I I completely agree with you on that. But where I'm saying is like okay, people with music and especially when it comes to hip hop, I feel that now in this generation, they're not only listening to hip hop. They're when they make hip hop, they're like, all right, cool. We have to one up the previous generation. They talk about all oh, these gangsters just selling drugs and killing people. You know what? Fuck it. They're just talking about it. We're going to live it. Yeah. We're actually going to yeah. live this shit. And so that way niggas think we're fucking real as shit, even though those little niggas are because shitting themselves hip-hop, every day. Hip-hop, you need bad, in hip-hop, um, unfortunately, the culture is you have to validate what you're saying in your lyrics. Exactly. You yeah. Be all all so the way like, real. They, they're really trying to live that lifestyle so all that they the get back, you know, so they all get the, uh, yeah, they're all yeah. the way real. You, but that's, you cannot be a paper, you cannot be a paper thug. Because you're going to have people who are going to press you, You cannot be bro. a paper thug, bro. But that's, that's, a, a, that's the thing about it, bro. With hip-hop, is very is a fecal, is a very fecal mistress. Yeah. And what I mean by that is that People come up in hip hop talking about violence, selling drugs, pimping women, doing all this other crazy negative shit. But once they get signed, they get the million dollars. They're not doing that shit no more. They out helping their communities. They out fucking um, helping their communities. They out fucking doing whatever they have to do in a positive manner. But they're still talking about fucking press learn more. Where? Learn more. All right. And don't go away. And yeah, just switch back over. Yeah, you just switch back over. Um, so what the, what's happening is that fucking they're rapping about certain life is all they're not living anymore. And they'll be stupid and quote me. I don't give a fuck with any rapper presses me about this shit. You're a fucking dumbass motherfucker yeah. if you come out the fucking hood with a couple of million dollar deal and you're still selling drugs and doing hood shit. Yeah. You're a dumb motherfucker because of the fact yeah, that you... Wild. Not only not only Fetty Wap, look at fucking the situation Young Thug and Gunners in. Yeah. You feel me? Like, bro, like you're you're one of the t- you're one of the top artists of this generation. 
You're telling me you're still out there doing gangster shit? Why, nigga? You, you could be out there. That, you know, you could be out there building but businesses. Trying to make people like, oh, I really live that lifestyle. It, nigga, I don't give a yeah. fuck. Who cares? Who, ca- who gives a life? fuck? But who gives a fuck? So, which goes back to you, what, what you guys said. Like, like the young young crowd, they're entertained by that shit. Yeah. They're, they either entertain or they want to be that rapper. You know what? My favorite rapper, he a thug, so I'm gonna become a thug too. And I'm yeah. gonna, and I'm gonna go outside and do like he's robbing cars, I'm gonna go rob cars. He's pimping the hoes, I'm gonna go pimp the hoes. He's doing this. It is it, a lot of is a lot of that shit that young kids get influenced by. A lot of emulation. The older people are like, eh, whatever. The older people are like whatever. But the younger kids, you think they listen to what their parents listen to, like for music? Hell no. They're listening to like like yeah. drill rappers. Yo, yeah. come outside and just and just drill that other dude right there. And that's yeah. it. Yeah, you know? spin the I block think, and smoke them. I think artists who have like uh, a big following or they have opportunities like to get interviewed and in, like you get interviewed right now, right? You're spreading a message, right? Like you know you're not an artist, but you know what goes on, right? With the how people get influenced by music, right? It's like I think like once you reach a certain plateau as an artist, is your due diligence. To like, you know, I know you got to keep your image. Like, oh, people think I'm gangster, but, you know, I can't, like, switch my character. But it's their due diligence to be like, okay, in interviews like this, like, whatever, yeah. or on the radio, be like, okay, listen, man, like, um, guys, this is, I do this for entertainment. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't, don't, don't think that selling drugs or killing people, that's the way that's to go. Good thing they like should, that. like. Express that some of them do, but not all of them. Do. Well, no, um, twenty one just did. You got Gucci yeah. Man doing it. Yeah, Gucci, Gucci Man. Twenty one, twenty one just did it with gun control. This guy, what's the other guy's name? Twenty one um, Savage. No, um, twenty one, twenty one. Um, Fucking love that. I live. <laughs> he's a down south rapper too. Um, light skinned dude with the uh, what the fuck is not Ti. No, he lost man way here on the keto diet and all that. Paul Wall. No, the other uh, no. Well, anyway, he does it too. Like he expresses messages now. Like he's. Bro, is that these these rappers who fucking yeah. listen? I'm saying this: if you come up spitting about violence and drugs and you no longer do it, but you're still spitting about violence and drugs, yeah. you should really be putting out the message: Yo, don't follow the shit I used to do. I mean, you don't. You I feel mean, me? I get it. In the music, like when you be doing the music, you're not thinking about you talking about you thinking about what's trending, right? Yeah, you're thinking but about you cool get shit. The chance to do interviews, especially like a mainstream mm-hmm. platform or platforms that are. Um, um, they have a lot of followings. Like, if you go on the Joe Rogan show, yeah, like you're that type of artist. Like, you know, you be like, okay, you know, there's a lot of people watching. That's your opportunity for you to be like, listen, guys, I'm an artist. I say this on my on records, but I don't want you to lead that lifestyle. You know what I mean? There's a different way. There's a different outing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but that's the thing about it. Like, you feel me? Like, even though there are some artists do fucking express that. That's not the reality for most people. Yeah, cause people like are, people are gonna still sell drugs. Yeah. Still, people are still gonna rob because of their conditions. Yeah. But if you could influence kids, and I'm talking about kids, like you feel me, teenagers especially, if you could influence them away from the street or at least the street life, bro, you wound up. You wound up everybody because not only can you talk about street shit, the shit you did, but now you're being a positive influence, even though you're still talking about your street shit. And that's that's a balance that I don't feel. I feel that hip hop hasn't learned yet. Yes, and the thing is, if you really think about it, the essence of hip hop, like we spoke earlier, was to spread a message, to give a lesson, right? So, right, is you as an artist, you you storytelling and you're trying to give a, a a a story about your life. That's fine. But if you're in your songs, you're also trying to give a lesson. When you're trying to give that lesson, do it on a on a on a on, on a, a platform or or not on a record because you know on the record they're not. You know, sometimes they have uh, um, quotas or uh, um, situations where, you know, the managers or the record labels say, you know, you got to do a song about this or it has to be commercial. Yeah. But when they get a chance to get interviewed, I understand on the mainstream platform, sometimes they have a program schedule. They're not going to allow you to speak about certain things because they yeah. want you to expose that artistry, right? But that's but the when you get to private um, platforms, like on a podcast, like... That's why podcasts are so fucking yeah, dope because say, of the fact listen, that... Guys, this is what I do. This is what I spit about. But at the end of the day, um, kids that are 14, 15 years old that follow my music, um, you can listen to my music, but nigga, don't do that. Don't do the same thing that I'm saying on the song. Stop. You know what I mean? Because like, at the end of the day, this rap shit is about like to the storytelling. 
Yes. They're saying they're storytelling. They're telling you what's going on in the hood. They're telling you what they're, they're, like, they're like reporters. Yes. You know what I'm saying that this rap game is to sell records. And some yeah. of them are talking about a friend of their crew. That's not even them doing that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They, they, some of these some of these rappers had lived that life, and some of the rappers never lived that life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like that with the influence right there, I would say like, listen, you gotta pay attention. These rappers, they're trying to sell records. They're trying to get out the hood. Yeah. They're not trying to like, you know, they probably had a friend who was a killer and shit, and they probably hanged out hanged out with the killer. And, ha and hung out with the, the drug dealer, or maybe they were drug dealers, but then they changed that whole shit and wanted to do this shit full fledged as a rapper to get out yeah. from the poverty zone. That's yeah. it. Yeah, because yeah. that's, that's what because that's what rap really is. Yeah. If you think about it, so many people want to be a rapper, so many people want to be an NBA player, so many people want to be a football player because they see that's the only way out yeah. of the hood. Yeah. They're yeah. not given much opportunity, and this is it comes back to economics too. We're not a lot of people like even us like we're first generation immigrants. We're from Dykeman, Washington Heights, Harlem. Come on, bro. What opportunities are really up here? Not much. Well, that's the whole thing. Back to what you were saying earlier, remember that um, sometimes we um, we don't see an opportunity there, and we resort to whatever is a the fastest way to make yeah. a buck, right? And that's the whole thing when you have these yo these younger generations seeing these rappers become rock stars basically mm -hmm. overnight, right? Yeah, and especially the young kids that come overnight. They're like, yo, um, okay, so you want me to be a doctor, a lawyer? Or a scientist, or whatever the fuck it is, right? You want me to be a a, a, a a prominent person in society through education, but then I go to school and I come out of school and it takes me ten years to pay my loan off. More, um, more. Come on, bro. And like, so they're like, you know years. what? Fuck school, bro. But that's you know what I mean. So the government that, should get it more involved in the sense, or community, you know, community leaders just, to be like, okay, education shouldn't cost that much, bro. It's but putting a burden. But think about it like this. Ed, the whole educational system needs to be reformed. Yeah. And we are back. You know, we had to go PP. And we're going to continue off. Where were we? Uh, yeah, so the other day, you're Mr. PP now. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. PP. PP. Pee -pee. But now, um, yo, Calico, so what, what's in store for the future? Like, what, what you got planned or what is, like, some of the things you want to well, accomplish? Right now, we got more tours coming up. We're going okay. to got California, got, got San Francisco, got... Ontario, California. We got more more tours coming up. We might go to Denver, Colorado. Okay. We might okay. go overseas also as well. Hey, what like Euro Euroland? Are we talking um South America? We're gonna hit Germany. Oh, Germany's fucking fire. We're gonna hit Germany. We're gonna hit like like Sweden and stuff like that. You definitely gotta hit like Stockholm and mm -hmm. fucking Amsterdam. Like because people love that that real genre of hip hop. You got fans there for days that really love that boom bap stuff there. So we you know. Japan, we, we definitely want to hit Japan. Japan's the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, just, just don't do anything too wild out in Japan. Oh, no, 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 no. You no, feel no. me? Uh, I, I don't want to hit, like, nothing crazy, but, like, we are going to hit, like, overseas, man, because, like, it, it's it's big out there. Like, the, no. The way, the way like, the culture of hip-hop culture is has evolved over there on that side. People are genuine fans over there. They'll buy yeah. your CDs, they buy your vinyls. I got vinyls with Mussolini that are out there. In I, Japan. I and, believe and, that. And, and my name is there. And how and going off of that, how you feel about like the U, the world versus like the U.S. when it comes to like music, the world Ex versus U especially I, the way like music is say, consumed. I was I, I would say like how U.S. is like you got certain fans that appreciate the culture, appreciate you know the the artist. They will buy. They, 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 they will stick by the fan. The fan will stick by the artist. That's yeah. what I mean. But when you get outside of the country, it's a it's it's a different world. People from Euro will come up to you, oh, I like your stuff and all that. Yeah. There's are genuine freaking fans that would like to purchase your stuff there. They like to know about you. They want to have the interviews with you. They want it's it's different. And and, and, and like I haven't been there yet, but for, for what I've seen in, in documentaries, they get a lot of love out there, bro. Hell yeah. That's what I've noticed too. Like people outside of the US. And, you know, I could back this up with my own analytics and all that yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, they pre appreciate music on a different level. 
Like they're like true fans. They like ge- they genuinely want to support you. Mm-hmm. They genuinely want to hear your story. Like yeah. where in the U.S., I feel like it's more of a consumerism mm-hmm. versus like genuinely liking the artist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you'll fuck with like artists like Little Baby and Drake because of the fact they're hot right now, but you're not really a fan. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. Like. Like, like out, yeah, exactly. Is, following, is, that, is that what you said? Yeah, following yeah. the trend. They, they, they're following all the hot trends, though. But then, then I go like, yo, but yeah, you're not really a fan. Like, you like the music, but are you really that deep into yeah. being a fan, like for life or something? No. Okay. There's so. like, there's like a song, like a single, cool. They yeah. get, they get by that. But yeah. how the fans work over there? It's a little different from the fans yeah. from over here on your side. Yeah. Definitely, because because the, the people out in Europe, and out in Asia, and even in South America, they're willing to pay whatever price it is to go to yeah, your show. Exactly, yeah. They want to go to the meet and greets. They want to fucking buy your CD. Yeah. They want they want the actual physical thing from you, yeah. bro. And they invest, and they invest in their artists, especially they used, if they fuck with you. It used to be like that, like when we like 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 when the CDs used to come out. Oh, I gotta get the CD. I gotta get the CD, Wu Tang CD, and non CD. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get it. Yeah. Now it is not like that. Yeah. Not all. They will have to wait till like uh, Drake is dropping at twelve o'clock. So let's download it. Let's see what Drake yeah. got. Let's see what Little Baby got. Let's see what whatever whatever artist they got. It's different now with the, with the digital world. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. It is different. Cause it became like a singles, sing, a like singles, singles game, right? Mm-hmm. But when you have an artist like Drake or. Kanye, right? They'll wait. They'll they, actually, they'll actually yeah. get the, C, the, the, they'll the, the do, CDs. They do the yeah. whole EP. They drop mm-hmm. a single, whatever, and then they put it out there for free because mm-hmm. yeah. they know they're gonna get money off the views, the off streams, the touring. Right? So that's a different nowadays, right? Mm-hmm. But um, for instance, like you guys were saying, that like, you know, sometimes they'll be a, a fan, right? They just got introduced to your music two years ago, right? Let's say, like, yeah, a guy like Jay Z, right? Bomb. Oh, he's a billionaire, owner of Uber, this and the Beyonce, his husband, whatever. They know that because it's current. Mm-hmm. But if you ask him a question, do you ever hear volume one? Do you remember this song, Lucky Me? They're not going to know. No, they're not going to know. know that. They're not going to know about it. They, new they, fans. New they, fans. Yeah, they recently got introduced yeah. to that. But people like us who've been riding with Jay or riding with Nas, and you feel me, there's very few... I could honestly say this. I think there's very few hip hop artists that have that longevity that people like from my generation and the younger generation, they have. So you need five that have a longevity status that, you know, off the top of your head. Off the top of my head right now, I would say Kanye, Jay, I want to say Nas, but no, Drake, J. Cole, and if you Kendrick. really. And Kendrick. Kendrick. Those are the. Yeah. Really, right now, alive, those are the top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Because Jay Z, even though he doesn't even release music, if he releases an album tomorrow, that shit's going platinum. Yeah, yeah. Facts. How do you feel about um, real quick? You know, I know we've been on the doing this interview for a minute, but I want to ask a question. How do you feel how um, um, some people, right? They'll pay four or five hundred dollars, right, to sit in the nosebleeds to see an artist that they like, right? Yeah. But there's a local artist. That they know they grew up with, who's coming up, who's doing a showcase. He has a ten dollar ticket. They won't buy the ten dollar ticket to go see them, but they'll go and buy the five hundred dollar ticket to see Romeo. Which they don't even know who Romeo is personally. They just know his music, but they know that artist who's doing a showcase for ten dollars. The popularity volume speaks out. That's why. That's a, that that that's one thing. That, like anybody who got a hit record. Yeah. Anybody who got a hit record, that's the, the records are popping. Everything is everything is up up in there. They're gonna go to that guy, or that or that or that or that girl. We're gonna mm-hmm. go to that guy or that girl that that has the hit the hits. Just if to say they were there. Yeah, if it's yeah. a local person, we're like, yo, dude, like you're Joe Schmo, like who are you? They're not gonna pay attention to that. But even if they like your music, they still won't go. Yeah, yeah. Ten dollars to get in. Uh huh. Yeah. You pay five hundred dollars for being a known. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bro. Somebody who's not supporting you, who's yeah, not paying exactly. your bills, nothing, just to say I was there. That's what. That's what happens. Versus, you got. This be- is your man mm-hmm. doing a showcase in a lounge, ten dollars just to go see him, and you won't go. Yeah, bro. Every, every everybody everybody at a point was a Joe Schmo. Yeah. Everybody was everybody was 
It started out, you didn't blow up overnight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No artists blew up overnight. So they had, they had to go through that phase yeah. just to get that spark going on versus the local rappers trying to be like, damn, like nobody wants to show up to my parties. Nobody gives a damn. He's going to feel that some type of way. Yeah. But like I say, keep working, keep working. And eventually, if it was three people that, that saw you, okay, three people saw you. Now, you're on to the next year. Ten people saw you now. Yeah. Then 20. Then you sold then you sold one show. Then you sold out millions of millions of yeah. those people show up. That's how it works like that. You yeah. just you, you just cannot think that this is going to be an easy road. Is it it's, it's it is hard. Yeah. It's yeah. not an easy road, but those same people that didn't show up to that $10 yeah, exactly, show. Yeah. Once once you create a, fra- a fad and you yeah. become trending. Exactly. And then you st- you're so busy because you're working. Yeah. Oh, you switched up. I've been Not, calling you. Can you get me a ticket? So you, know, so you, know, like, you know what you do? You know, you know what you do? Yeah. When that happens right there, you go like, but you never showed up to my show. Yes. And this is what happens. Have you ever heard of this, right? How you have a friend who's an artist. I mean, not us because we support. Yeah. But you have a, a friend who's an artist. Mm-hmm. You weren't supporting him. You didn't go to the Tanada show. He blows up. He's working. He's busy. You want access to his shit. You want a hookup. And he doesn't answer you. This is why sometimes people are like, oh, this nigga, this artist, he's cocky. Oh, he's a dick. He's not answering. No, nah, but. My DMs. Well, you may not be answering your DMs because he's busy. But también, at the same time, maybe he's not answering you because you never supported. And now you want to support because he's famous. Yo, he's bro. Trending. Bro, it's but that's the. Fame, up. It's the fame that gets to these people. Uh, and, and that's what Pac said also. It is the fame that gets to these people. Because because back then, yo, who, he, and Pac said it himself, nobody was coming to my shows like that. Like, like it took time for him to develop all that shit yeah. right there. Yeah. It took time. He had to go to the Apollo just to do those shows. And then it took mad time. And then from there, All Eyes, come, all eyes on Me comes out a couple of years ago in the 90s. Shit is sold out, bro. Yeah. This thing is making big numbers, bro. Yeah. People want to be near him. When the champ is there, everybody wants to be near him. When, yeah. the, when the loser's not there, nobody wants to be him. Then who the fuck is that guy? Nobody wants to be with you shooting who, in the who gym, the fuck bro. Is that guy? Yes. You ain't you yes. ain't got no you ain't got no trending. You ain't got no money. You ain't got no you ain't you're not showing the way. Nobody wants to be near you. Yeah. And also on top of that, you also have to remember this. When it comes to friends and family, and you We've experienced this. Yeah. You probably experienced yeah, this. Yeah, experience. You have to turn your friends and your families into believers. Yeah. Yeah. They see you personally, so they don't see you. They don't see me as the other day. They see me. They see me as Ariel or yeah. A. Yeah. They don't see me as the other day, the EDM artist. They see me as A. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And that's forever ingrained in their brain until I reach the plethora. Of, like, yo, exactly. come with me to this festival. I'm headlining tonight. But and they then also, they see it and they're like, they oh, but shit. They, but they don't want to... I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Cut you no, go ahead. I, I don't mean to cut you off. But they don't... See how you're talking about, like, you got your podcast, you got your yeah. EDM, you got, your, you got your own stuff going on. You... I'll take this example. You as, a, you as being a manager for so many people and people know... That yo, no, he knows knows a lot of people. I gotta get with this guy. Yeah, he got, he knows a lot of people. They don't see the the hard the, the hard struggle, struggling days of this man. No, of course not. They don't see that. Of course not. It was not easy to do. This is blood, sweat, and tears right here, bro. Like, but that, the but that's a, that you produce that Purina. Yeah, yeah. It took us literally from since March to finally it's on, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yo, bro, to go through a lot. bro. Yeah. It took it basically took you the lifespan of this podcast. Yeah. Exactly. At yeah. this point, to yeah. put that they, track out. They don't, they don't and luckily, you know, I had the help of the other day and guys like Calico, you know what I'm saying, Ivy, Tambien, people who, like, but that, that's that's the, the, thing. the other day. Um, not you the other day, but the other day. Hey, man, every great um, story begins with the other day, bro. From one of the artists that was on the song. I'm not going to mention his name. They, yo, I've been hitting you through WhatsApp. You're not answering my calls or my voice notes. Um, nobody does that to me. Everybody answers me. I'm like, so I'm like, dude, are we in high school? Are you my girl? Like, I'm not answering you because I'm busy. But what is it you need? Like, I'm dealing with your manager. Like, trust the process. Like, what yeah. is it you need? 
I'm not promoting it. I'm not doing anything. Okay, so don't promote it. At the end of the day, you got 20% of a song for free that you didn't invest no money in nothing. Yeah. They, they, they lose people losing out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just people think, they think it, nah, bro. It's this, was, this business is about blood, sweat, and tears, bro, for real. Like, when you get up there, like, like I said, I get my first Oscar, yo, I'm gonna get mad emotional about that shit. Of course. I get my first Grammy or Emmy, whatever it is, uh, there's emotion about that shit. Yeah. There's so much things I had to do because I turned the non believers into believers. Yes. And that's exactly. the goal. And the thing is, and that's the goal, the, bro. Most of the artists don't understand that because the artists, right? Some of them do, but most of them don't because most of the artists go and they record a song. The producer mixes it, masters it, engineers everything, right? The manager goes out there, exposes and gets them to the showcase. Mm -hmm. They got a, um, a publicist who's out there spreading the name. They got a street team throwing out some um, mixtapes, whatever. They're stuck on the artistry. They don't understand, like, behind the scenes, there was a group of people who actually helped him get there. Yeah. An investor. Yeah, yeah. or an but, investor. But today. you also have to remember, like, yeah. you have to look at artists that come up by themselves. And I don't mean truly by themselves, but Those start, it, start with, like, nobody on the corner, bro. Yeah, Those, Those art artists understand. Those artists know. get it. And yeah. artists that, like, have a team and have a manager and have all this, that, in the third from the beginning, bro... I feel like those artists are kind of spoiled yeah, because spoiled. because of the fact that I'm not saying anybody should go through struggle. You feel me? But in this game, and I'm going to quote somebody that is very volatile right now, and I don't know if y'all know about him, Andrew Tate. Yeah, Andrew Tate? Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's very volatile right now. But I saw a, a podcast interview with him and some chick. It was a, a really good podcast, but he was being a dick. But he said something to me that fucking rung out. And you feel me? Like, I don't prescribe to what he says or whatever, but he, when niggas like that fucking drop these gems, I kind of, like, listen because it's like, out through all your ignorance and all your arrogance, you said something valuable. He said that men every day, men, the world that men live in, and I'm talking about guys, we live in a player versus player world. It's me versus you. All day. We wake up, we have to go out, get the world, nobody's giving us a break. Now, taking that same mentality, you have you can have you have to apply it to industry. Mm. You feel me? So like, if you're not out there go getting it and making sure you're getting it, somebody else is gonna get it. Yes. You feel me? So it's player versus player, and what a lot of people don't understand is like that since it's player versus player, if you squad up with your team, bro, everybody gotta eat, mm -hmm. and you can't because of the fact that you're the face of it, you can't be ignorant to that. And a lot of people who have these teams from the beginning are very ignorant to the work that, that their team is doing for them. And that sucks. You feel me? And a lot of people get taken advantage and dropped even though they put in the work for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the wackest shit ever. It is the wackest shit ever. Um, at the end of the day, man, um, you know, you can't be selfish and be like, okay, like, especially if you have a team, like, you know that your manager, your publicist, and even your boys put in work, you know, you got to show homage and be patient and be like, you know what, I had a team behind me. So, you know, it is what it is, man. But listen, yeah. man, it's been a great episode, man, In The House Podcast. The other day, Johnny Bamboo, Manny, you already know what it is, man, choo-choo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My nigga choo-choo. You already know, choo-choo, I said choo-choo. Um, yeah, so, In The yo. House, Nelly Nell, Kyle the Hit, man. Bro. But before we go, yo, Kyle, can you let everybody know where they can find you at? Guys can find me at Calico the Hitman on Instagram. Find me on the gram, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like it's all my hip hop productions, my like like you know, got the brands in there and everything. Shout out to Purism. Now this brand is not my brand, but it, this is Moose's brand and I'm just rocking it. Moose Mussolini, right? Mussolini. Like Mussolini a, with crisis on it, you know that stuff, you know. We're definitely gonna be putting down a link in the description so y'all you know can check out the merch. Like, 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 hit me up on the gram. Yeah, Definitely. yeah, hit them up if you want some producer advice. Hit them up if you want some beats. And remember, respect the producer. I am the other day. This is Neighbors, and we in the house. <laughs>